thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord. I thank you for the peace that comes upon us. I thank you for our friends and family and loved ones that we get to make for a lifetime. The Bible says to use worldly wealth so that we'll be welcome into heavenly dwellings. And I pray that we would use all the physical things you give us, the blessings, such as the principle, how the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. I pray that we would always use the things we have to show love to one another so that we would be remembered in heaven and in eternity by what we did with the wealth that you did give us, by what you did by the little that you gave us or the much. And whatever you do, give us, Lord, let us be faithful. Let us use it to feed the needy, clothe the naked, Lord to uh, look after those who need to be looked after, to help heal those who need healing, Lord, and help recover those who need to recover. I thank you that, and may everything we do on this earth be remembered, especially for the good, and may people forgive us for all the evil that we've given others. Whether we did not forgive somebody, we did not. We did evil to them, did bad actions, we held something against them, Lord, let us forgive them. And let us move on into strength and, and, and a power. Let us move into something that is strong, a better relationship. Repair all the relationships that have been damaged by such frivolous things. Even if those things were legitimate, let us remember that you forgave us on the cross. Even though those things were, I would think, unforgivable. You said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you forgave us. I would say they do, They know exactly what they're doing and they did it on purpose and maybe they did. But in light of eternity, if they really knew what they were doing, they would not do it. If they really knew they were killing the Son of God, if they really knew eternity in hell, they would never do such silly things. Forgive us, Lord, for all the silly things we did to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We'll, we'll close at the end. Sheba and BTC. Been falling really very closely. Let's take a look at XOR. We got a, a message. We talked about this just the other day about the XOR situation. Yeah. XOR is a token that has been delisted at first from Gate.io. Now, this was a crypto that was once trading at over $900 and falls to 007. Uh, it, zero, zero, 008 now this is a very strong fall for B, for you uh, for XOR and it's been like that for quite a while and we have some beautiful maps uh, of what happened but I it's I gave a, a report the other day and I believe I made it public at the very least I made it uh, available to uh, people in our communities and I said that this crypto has been the subject of shenanigans on a week as a daily chart this crypto xor has been going down on a very interesting curve very almost mechanical curve and as it reaches the bottom of this area i see lots of where's my previous xor charts i need a better image for xor see blah, blah, blah. yep somewhere like here and as it reaches the bottom in this area thank you very much i see sorry as it reaches the bottom, I see prices being accumulated in this area by to the tune of very a very large tune, lots of money coming into XOR. And it looks something like this. Okay? You can see massive amounts of volume on the down bars, followed by drifting prices, prices breaking the parabolic into health. This isn't dumping right here. This is accumulation to the tune of over 100 million plus off the chart, somewhere off the chart in the volume. And it's like that for several weeks. And I think to myself, and I said, this is what I said, shenanigans. Why are they delisting it right now from Gate.io? Why now? The recovery is in place with round action. Everything is in place. Why Gate.io is delisting it? And I think about the situations about RDD. I think about the situations with Phi, which is the Pi. And I see to myself that I think what's happening is that they're preparing for some time in the future. And they want to shut the opposing side out of the game. It's like you take away your guns and then you can do a move. You can't do anything with people in the way. And I think what they're doing is they're planning. Uh, it's like the big boys bought at pennies on the dollar 
shutting everyone else at the game. They were going to recover it sometime to its target, which is around a dollar. And that's going to be just to the recovery line. It's over 5,000%. So just to recover to its trend line is over 5,000% gain. And I say shenanigans. And that's what I say. Now, now you can uh, find XOR on other exchanges, but it's you can't find that chart anymore on, on Gate.io. Last time we looked at it, a few weeks here was back in March of 2020. We can see health after health coming into price rounding on sword cuts and bouncing up. New sword cut created, price bouncing up. Then we have this uptrain, and the last wing thing that happened was a big pump and push through this area, and price sits on this area on the weekly chart. And then the very next week, prices start going down on gate IO all the way down to like right here, and XOR is down. And what happens when it's down? They say, oh, oh, oh where, where we decided we're going to delist it. So on the website, it says something like this. After revaluation about XOR, Gate.io has determined that it no longer meets the criteria of trading on our platform. As a result, Gate.io plans to delist XOR from trading the market, including spot trading, quant trading, liquidity mining. But we'll continue to provide withdrawal service for users for a period of one month. Gate.io has suspended the deposit service on Gator, so you can't put money in. Gator has suspended XOR, including spot trading and liquidity mining. So if you were staking or something like that, you can't mine it anymore or uh, liquidity uh, stake it, something like that. Users who have in progress XOR quant trading should adjust your strategies beforehand. So if you had any open positions, they're going to stop you from those positions. Otherwise, those trades will be terminated before April 8th. Now that already happened. Users who have provided liquidity miners should withdraw the liquidity in advance, otherwise automatically redeemed. For users who do not wish to participate in the buyback, after the listing, we strongly encourage you to withdraw your XOR tokens as soon as possible. So they're saying you can move them off Gate.io. Just take your XOR. You're going to need to put it somewhere else to avoid any potential losses. Users who still hold XOR and Gate.io after April 21st can submit a participation in our buyback and will repurchase the price at the 0003A, but the maximum competition a single user can apply for is only 100 UST. So you can get out and they'll give you that price if you do it, but it's only a maximum of $100. To apply for the maximum compensation, users are requested to fill out the following form if you want the compensation. Otherwise, you're just going to hold out your tokens. So you have to decide what what you're going to what you're going to do about this type of situation now there's superfoo was telling us about the xor wallets and you can actually download an xor wallet and move tokens to there from what i'm understanding some people in the community are doing that and i've been planning to do mines this week now i haven't decided exactly what i was going to do but i plan to move my uh, xor to there i was planning on moving it to a different exchange that can hold it or to a hard wallet that was going to hold it. But I think I'm going to use move the XOR wallet. So the XOR wallet the website is going to be, I should make sure I'm doing this right. I have it on my phone. And it's like something.org. Let me make sure if I go to the right website. Here it is. And the website is called Sora.org. That's the one. Sora.org. I'll take a, script, a screenshot. And this is the one I believe Superfood sent to me. It's a place where you can download the wallet. Sora wallet up here in the corner. And this would be a place for XOR tokens. So from what I understand should be able to move tokens to one of these type of wallets. And that might be one option for you. Now, if this is only if you're holding long term, now price already fell, fell down below all of those supports that we showed in the previous image. But that chart is no longer available. You can find XOR and others, uh, but XOR is going to have taken a big hit because of this type of situation. That's going to be a lot of people just trying to sell off and some people are going to be mistrusting for XOR for a while. So if you are going to be staying in XOR or just selling out your coins 
and then just bind back something uh, bind back uh, later or something I, I personally believe this is going to be a lot like the RDD situation where RDD was once a coin trading at a very high amount and it fell from grace and then it recovers and for a few days it's trading at over $355 and there's millionaires that are in the group but the problem in our group but they the problem is they can't access those funds because it's been delisted and the they are shutting the regular people out now this begs the question this is a type of external factor situation if xor recovers and it's still delisted on other exchanges or they the attempt is to try to get it out of your hand so that you cannot do things with it i think that's what they're going to try to do or at least to kill to stop out as many people as possible i also mentioned in my previous report i also believe it's a lot like the luna classic situation where luna classic was trading at 180 dollars fell all the way to zero 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 seven and then what happened is the company said let's split it into two pieces and obscure the history so if you try to go back and find those on the coins they split into one of them kept the name of the first or the father but it's really the baby and that coin was called the luna okay and luna was doesn't have any history showing how far it fell from grace it makes people take says hey look here now we heard from the prophetic community it's actually luna classic that's the one that's going to recover and then recently we heard more um prophetic words that luna uh there'd be a, there was a prophetic word that luna people would be uh, the project would be absorbed back into luna classic and it would be uh, a type of repentance for the company type of attitude where they're going to say yeah we should have we shouldn't have split the coin because the the people who had it didn't ask for the coin to be split they in fact i was there and they, i remember hearing about the vote that they were taking and they from all the people and the people were like no we don't want to split the coin but then the company split it anyways shenanigans I call shenanigans. Look here. Don't pay attention to what's happening actually here. And so I think that's a, that it's a type of manipulation. It's a type of external factor. So ultimately, I want to say this. Because Luna doesn't have that structure based on these external factors, a big incoming dump, it's going to affect the chart. It's definitely going to affect the chart. And what I'm seeing is that it's going to be up to you what you're going to do with your Luna Classic. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with my Luna Classic. For me, I wrote it off. I said in my mind, I said, I'm going to hold this Luna Classic because I'm holding, I'm sorry, Luna Classic. I'm going to hold my XOR because uh, as long as I can keep it on a hardware wallet, I wasn't holding for any of these prices anyway. I'm holding for that recovery price and that's where I'm going to be taking my profit. So I can see the big boys entering in the market I'm entering the market. The big boys play the long game. I can play the long game. I'm not intraday trading XOR anyway, so I don't really care. I just care about having a lot of XOR tokens for when a time would it re would recover. And uh, we heard prophetic words from Triple J. She said they kept saying XOR was sore. Uh, and I think that's going to be very interesting in the future. Now, I hope that I'm able to take advantage of it when it does soar. And I believe we will as long as it's available somewhere. When I saw XR, uh, RDD hitting 300 and 355 and staying there for approximately three days, fluctuating on a bell curve, going down in price around on a bell curve, that tells me something really important. There's a market up there. Somebody and some people are taking advantage of those prices. Somehow it's trading up there. It's not a glitch. If it was a glitch, it would just go up there and come right back down. It was going down on a bell curve. 300, 355, 325. 300, 280, 280, 180. You saw it stay there for a little bit and then it goes back down to like normal as if it never happened. Somehow, somewhere, there's trading that's going on up there at those prices. And that's undeniable fact. How can you just stay and sustain at those prices unless somebody somewhere is taking advantage of those? Now, what exchanges are those? Who's privy to those things? I don't know, but I do know that when regulations come into place, gold standard comes back, when the veil is torn from behind the scenes and we see dual ledger stuff, many of us are going to be able to take advantage of those type of situations. And I think more of those shenanigans are going to happen in the future, maybe with some coins that you guys trade. Prophet Robin said about over two years ago that the manipulation would be revealed one day in the crypto market and people would be fed up with that manipulation. They'll call for regulations at that time if the regulations are not already in place.
People are going to get fed up with this type of manipulation. And I absolutely can see it happening. For people who are still emailing me or messaging me about XOR and you missed my previous XOR report, this is another one. This is some of the actions that you guys can take regarding XOR. Okay, you can find it on other exchanges currently at 0008. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 0, 8, 1, 5 currently. Looks like, yeah, thank you very much. And I think that's going to be very interesting. Augie says, isn't it interesting that XOR keeps adding more supply? So again, shenanigans. Don't just delete, the, don't just de delist this coin. There's, they're always trying to shut the regular people out. They did, they try to do the same thing with XR, XRP. The SEC, our United States Government Securities and Exchange Commission, tried to do that with XRP. They caught. They tried to say XRP is a, a, not a legitimate coin because uh, such, and we're we're going to sue them. And they go after XRP and they delist it from Coinbase. And to get XRP, you had to go through all these other avenues. Then they finally drop this uh, part of the case, and then there's a, a settlement that goes on, and all this stuff. It's all shenanigans. Don't do that. Did you know they did the same thing to Bitcoin back in the day? They tried suing them for a period of, I think it was two years, something like that. And then finally they drop it right at the last moment and then the case goes. And then it just shot up. What did they do also? With Ethereum. They did the same thing. They try and sue Ethereum. This is the government. So if even the governments are doing these type of things, saying, hey, hey, they're trying to do this on purpose. They want you out. They want you out. So you have to decide what you're going to do with your XOR. You can get out and, and do trading, trading with that, with whatever those funds are, or you can just hold on to your coins. Me, I'm holding on to my coins. I'm probably going to hold on to them because I believe the, I believe that the project's going to do something good, and I cannot deny my eyes of what I see in the volume regarding uh, XOR. And I can't deny what we were last looking at before the shenanigans were happening. And before the shenanigans were happening, I was seeing structures on top of the trend line uh, i see all of that now price is of course way down here but the, the chart is not even available i want you guys to know you guys can decide what you will do with your xr xor tokens but this is definitely one one path you can go using a sora wallet it appears that's going to be something okay all right let's move on let's look at a uh, yellow shawnee cat says is it okay to buy Uniswap, XOR on Uniswap? Is the same name crypto? Can you buy on Uniswap? Should be able to. Gala went gay Dave, and for the weekend there. Uh... Every coin did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. XO. Currently on other exchanges. Let's see if we can look on Uniswap, XOR, Uni. Structure looks very much uh, very similar uh, on BitGet here with no recovery in sight, except for look at the ultra high volume on these down bars. Look for structures to be broken or prices to drift on over the weeks. This is a weekly chart, and that might be a that might be a big clue that new money is coming in because the buying has to happen on the down bars when prices are low. And it's no secret that during the 1930s crash, stock market crash of, I think it was 1932, when, when the prices cr uh, crashed, the banks began buying up over several weeks. They were buying those low prices and then they shut out the other banks. They actually bought out other banks. And that's how JP Morgan, Chase Bank, the Bank of America in its first name back then, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. That's how they got, the, they, that's how they got really big. Some of these banks that you know and love today, love, by the way, bought out a lot of really legitimate smaller banks during the stock market crash. And many of those events were manipulated to be so. Okay. And when the crash happened, they were already expecting it, saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they were buying when everybody else was selling. And they, when the markets did recover, those banks, they didn't have anything. But the new banks were in power now because they were the strongholders. Always, they always want, want to buy something. You want to pay the cheapest price. Just think about when you go to a grocery store, you don't want to pay high price for eggs and milk. You want to pay when prices are low and when there's a sale, people come running. It's the same with the big boy money. Okay. All right. Gala. I don't expect Sora to move anytime soon. I don't believe so. 
Mm -mm. Uh, actually, I think we should just go to Bitcoin first so you guys can take a look at this and then we'll look at the market in context. We've talked about this on Saturday in the morning just before they happen. So, random eggs that are. During the week, I saw a gala down a lot on Wednesday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't have any confirmation. I thought about my business and didn't look at any charts. I should have opened a short like at that point, but mm -hmm. on, sat on Saturday, a friend of mine, on Sunday morning, I opened up my phone and my friend says, Oh, yesterday morning, I had a dream. Or the Lord spoke to her and she heard the words, Dada, don't. And Data dump. Is that what you heard? Yeah, she heard the words data dump. And let's see. Let's find this. On Saturday morning. Data leak and data dump. I was thinking. I got her and her sister to buy some crypto, but they've only got a couple of bucks in it. And she doesn't really watch crypto, but I kind of have said, look, I want you to contact me when anything happens. If the Lord shows you anything because you're not involved in crypto and you're unbiased but she, she waited 24 hours before she uh, sent me the message and i was speaking to her last night i says oh, if you goes, oh i should learn about it i says i don't want you to learn about it the fact you don't know anything about it is better because you're unbiased i can't not blame it anyone but it would have been good to have a confirmation from what happened wednesday to had a saturday morning it would have been pretty she felt when the Lord spoke to her that it was about crypto because she knew that I, w I would be using that word dump in regards to crypto all the time. Uh huh. And she also had a dream a few months back about rockets going off and a deer in the headlights being dazzled and all these fireworks and rockets. And that kind of coincided with this, with the same night that Iran launched all the rockets at Israel. Mm hmm. And the deer could be maybe symbolic of Israel because that was my there's verses lots of verses in the Bible that speak about a deer. But I didn't have the information on Saturday morning to really act on it, so I just I was busy working doing stuff. Okay. We looked at uh, Bitcoin on and, and on Saturday, and we saw that short-term weaknesses came in, but the long-term health, I believe, is still in. So I have a map that looks something like this, okay? Where price is well above our monthly flat. We already got the big push in here. So we are expecting at some time for us to come back and bounce into these areas. And now we bounced once, actually first we bounced the first week after we pumped. Then we bounced again, came up and bounced again. Now we're in this area and this is where we're at right here. And overall, we're forming round structure. Now, I remember the Lord gave me a vision, and I told you guys when it happened, I said, hey, there's, I see round structure on top of a blue line on Bitcoin. And you guys remember, I think that was about maybe three, four weeks ago, something like that. And I said, there's a round structure. I think it was on the daily chart. And at the time, it looked something like this. Round structure here. Now, what we see is there's a downtrend or a down watch line, which is just adjusted just a little bit hair slightly up from our last watch line. In addition, we have this support here and prices being underneath there or hanging out underneath there. Any closes would bring us down into these areas. And this is what happened. But overall, what we still see is a supply test. I believe this is a supply test. And the reason I believe it's a supply test is because we talked about these, I think several weeks ago, and I said, there's a lot of buying going on in these bars, but it's supply, but the heavy, but there's heavy supply on these down bars. So if we look at the supply <clears throat> at this area, you can see ultra high volume down bars followed by ultra high volume up bars in an area of support back to back. And then the prices drift upwards. I believe this is a big clue for us that buying is coming in at these prices, which we talked about. If we compare them to the previous down bar here, this down bar, ultra high volume, a little bit off the chart volume on the down bar, but the next two bars are up. So how can that be a selling? How can this be a dump in prices? All this is, is accumulation. The down bar closes up near the middle as well. 
Okay, so that's going to be something to watch out for. But we see now a training of the supply. The, for the last time we're at these prices, the volume's way up here. We come here, now the volume is a little bit less. We come here again, and the volume on the down bar is even less. So now we're starting to see something of a pattern emerging, and that is going to be a draining of the supply. Okay, there's a draining of the supply every time we're at these low prices. So I said, hey, there's still too much supply in here, is what I said. There's still too much supply. Don't be surprised if on Bitcoin, they test it down just a little bit longer. Now, this is so this is a little bit concerning because when they brought it down again, it's another down bar closing upwards near the top. The next bar is an up bar. So this is just a spike type of maneuver. But the problem with this one is there's also too much supply. In fact, this supply is a little bit greater than this last one. So what do I expect? I expect them to bring it down one more time. Okay, we what we're looking for and what I told you guys in my previous images is this is we're looking for no demand bars. Okay, I'll show you my previous Bitcoin and I'll show you exactly what we were looking at. Ah, here it is. So here's our previous Bitcoin chart before the spike fell down. We were just hanging out right there. I said, hey, look for them to bring it down back here. We're looking for no demand bars, which means we're looking for the supply to be drained out of this blue area. And until it's drained out of this blue area, usually the markup won't continue. Once the supply is drained out of there, if they do bring it down, usually it's the markups, it's going to be very short lived and the markup will be quickly. So that means they'll break out quickly. And but almost always before the breakout, they always almost always have a period of no demand. And if you guys notice that, so that is something that I'm watching, I'm watching for. But now that we are in this territory and you can see over this is the daily chart okay so now we're down here what i can see is that there's a lot of supply in this area so there is that supply means buying don't get me wrong there is buying in this area but there's too much of it so the big boys know hey there's a lot of people willing to part with their bitcoin at these prices maybe they're panicking whatever the case is that's fine right that's what moves markets Maybe there's just too many people that just got fed up over time saying, ah, I'm not wasting. Maybe it's because it's in, they think that the short term weaknesses that are falling into this is enough to bring it down. That could be the case. I also see exactly this. There is a longer support based on a smaller foundational area back here in orange that is still at play. So this is a natural place where there would be enough supply. There'd be a lot of support that comes in along these support lines. So that may that may account for the increase in volume here at these areas. That may account for the increase in volume in these areas. And that's okay. But they know that the people are willing to pay those prices. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to try to bring it down and hover more into these prices. All of it is still within the support range of here. Now, we had a prophet, prophetic number recently from Triple J said, uh, I think it was on Saturday, um, that she said 55, but like a touch and go type of thing. And I could absolutely see that happening because if we continue drifting past this this area short-term weaknesses ensue and we get to play in this a little bit longer still within the watch line before any breakouts to higher prices we can still be playing and therefore i don't seeing this now increase in supply I, i'm even more convinced they're going to try to touch and go on bitcoin a little bit further they're going to try and touch and go not to stay in here but to gobble up the supply because we already see what they're doing they're already buying buying this is what the professionals are doing they play a longer game and they can play a longer range the smaller people can get stopped out really easy and that's just something you guys to know when you're playing against these big whales they can take a small hit they will actually do a small hit and drive a rally down into these prices sometimes with structure now i don't believe there's going to be structure down here i don't see that happening at all i all believe all the structure is above this blue line but they could spike it into this area i could absolutely see that happening because i already see what they're doing they're accumulating along this path and if they're accumulating they don't mind taking your stops out and saying thank you you get out of the trade they get to buy it even cheaper 
the best prices they can pay are going to be around here and when they're here at 55 or anything below here they're very lucky but i actually believe this is the, what is the case okay so this is in alignment with what we talked about on saturday does anybody have any other questions about about bitcoin okay well, this means i expect to move up before then march april 30th move yes this is actually going to go down so i'm going to have to expect it a little bit I can't expect it anymore since the watch line has been adjusted to be a little bit higher. We adjusted that watch line. So before it was down here at this angle. Now it's going to be above here. So this one is going to be deleted. Now I'm going to put in my little report here. See, we already got the closes below 67. We're still focusing on those 63, 59 area. That's where the bulk of the support is. So I'm just going to put in my text along this track. Because of the increase in supply after supply buying, I should say supply buying, at the 63 to 59 area, I would expect prices to play closer to the blue line, blue monthly line even more so before the breakout i still see that there was professional accumulation along the blue line but there is a market here <laughs> at these lower prices and the big players can see this in the data it is possible there will be another down move on Bitcoin possibly to the 55k profitic number as a touch and go short-lived this matches that I should say this there should not be strong structure down below the blue line because of the buying on top of it if there was no demand bars on the blue line I would have expected the markup sooner markup or up move I should say just to make things simple for you guys up move sooner that is not the case okay C chart room EP 204 okay so if you guys missed that, again, just in brief, there's too much buying here and the increase from the last time we did a supply test in these areas, we don't have no demand yet. Uh, I should say last time we were, we, were, we were getting close to the blue line, which was here, we went up in volume, which means there's too much of a market here. So they're going to try to bring back prices into here until most likely until there's either really strong heavy buying or a markup but seeing the buying coming in is very bullish for the next season of bitcoin and that me and i absolutely believe it's going to look something like this a big up move past these areas and that is in alignment with usdt.d okay and i'll put this here this is daily supply increase increase past in an area of weak in short in an area of short-term weakness supply you write that down supply. Daddy, yeah you're gonna get into that i know supply increase in the area of short-term weakness supports prices hanging out in short-term weakness okay this equals more 
short term weakness. Any other questions regarding this? We will look at USDT.D. But you guys wanting what's happening with Bitcoin right now, that's what's happening. Okay. Just like we talked about on Saturday. Okay. I wasn't really panicking on Saturday because we already talked about it going down back to the blue line because there was already too much supply. But this is even more legitimate fact that we're probably going to face through this support. I don't expect the move to happen. Therefore, today, we probably got it another week or so. Okay. These will all come down. This one right here is going to come down. This one's going to move to the side. This will this actually we can just leave this like this maybe. And then there's another one that will clone out borrow this one to show that touch and go is very possible underneath this orange line. Okay. So it looks something like that. It's very possible we'll come down, make our way up here to the underside of this orange and then come down here before we touch and go and gobble up. And you're going to see this a little bit more uh, when we look at Shiba because it looks very similar to Shiba, although Shiba's move already started. So you, you'll see that it's actually quite nice. Okay. All right. Let's look at USDT.D. Make sure I'm not missing you guys' messages. So have the cryptos lost their setups because of the short-term weaknesses and supports and sword cuts? What a great question. Have the cryptos lost their setups because of the short-term weaknesses, because of the supports and sword cuts, or would they break above easily as they did recently? I actually do not believe, I actually do not believe that they, many of them lost their setups. I, I don't, I, I haven't seen that to be the case. In fact, just, I think just the opposite. They're just sitting on, many of them are sitting still on their supports. You'll see that in just a few moments. Ooh, something interesting. Lisa pointed this. We have come to an agreement with Gate.io to delist XOR. XOR prioritizes its users, ensuring that they have the best experience as Gate.io was selling XOR at a premium. We believe this didn't come to alignment with our core values. That is great. So is it Gate.io's fault? Or source or I believe that would be definitely a gate IO problem. Okay, take a look at this image on my screen. Thank you very much, Lisa. I appreciate you. I sure do appreciate all of you guys who are uh, providing a, a lot of uh, data for the community and bringing things to my attention when it needs to. Okay. Might be about as well. I think that XOR is a inflationary asset, so. You know, if Gate.io has to have some sort of liquidity supply, they have to hold a certain amount. Maybe they have to hold like 50k it's worth or something mm -hmm. in liquidity. They might not like the fact that their uh, liquidity pools deflate um, in the way. There's always two sides of every story, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that. Remember that. It's a very. Yeah, there's always. The Bible says the first to speak in a matter always seems right until another witness is cross until the witness is cross examined or another witness is brought forth. So I think that's very interesting. The Bible tries to remind us. Remember, always listen to both sides. It helps us be a good judge and not partial. All right, here we go. USDT.D. I won't spend too much time. We talked about it on Saturday, so we don't really need to cover this too much. If you guys didn't see those videos on Saturday, go ahead and slow down those parts on USDT.D. It's not any different than what we've seen. Here is the USDT.D. We're looking. Here is the move on USDT.D. I'm primarily concerned that we're underneath the blue area. You guys remember from my report about a month or so ago, we were looking at coming down into this area. You guys know the report for two years before that. Once we were broken below here, I was looking for us to come down to 4.1, uh, the 4.987 number right here to 4.61. We stretched it down just to account for the cores on the monthly. But this is approximately the range we've been expecting. And what happened is when we came down into those areas, Bitcoin had a very large pump. But it was more than that because we pumped underneath into this area on ultra high volume and i believe this was a strong pushing volume to help get us underneath this area because i told us we're not going to get past this area unscathed we're either going to bounce on top and if it's wrong then we're going down to 3.14 to 
zero area. We're going down there, which would equal Bitcoin being around a hundred thousand to a hundred and twenty thousand dollar range. Now this aligns me somewhat with some of the more recent prophetic Triple J gave us about those low prices. Okay, so that's going to be very interesting. Now on the weekly chart, I, I give I give kudos. What is kudos? I don't know. It sounds delicious. I would like some kudos. If you would like to give me kudos, they sound like a, a yummy snack. I'll say kudos to you. Later. Yes, but if you would like some kudos, then we'll see what happens. I would like some kudos. Now, here's what we're going to do. Is This is thanks to Phil A. Is he here? Okay, yeah. Chick-fil-A's here. I love my friend Chick-fil-A. He gave me a chart, and he says, hey, I believe... There's a parabolic along this route and he, he made a chart and he basically took the core and wick in these areas and combined it with this. And he says, I believe there's a core about this area and it's very possible there is. And that means there would be a lot of pressure. Hi. Sorry, my son's a little louder. I don't know if you guys can hear him. Go ahead. There, that would mean there would be a lot of pressure right here. And last week, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Center Time, we see the manifestation of that pressure. There was a lot of pressure to still keep us underneath this parabolic. And that's a good sign that USDT.D is still going down. But now it looks like round structure underneath. Now, of course, we hit the spike zone as we expected because we measured the distance in our previous previous times when we were above that area up here. And um, that's where we are. We basically spiked down into it. I put this little area. I expected prices to to move up from here. So, uh, we can delete that now. And prices did come back into this zone. We're ultimately looking to continue building underneath this line and preferably if we can underneath this parabolic and coming down. In addition to all of that, congratulations to somebody yesterday who sent me their first chart. And here's what she drew. And I thought I said she did it right. Vibrant, congratulations. Oh, oop, did I see your name out loud? Sorry. But congratulations, she did. She drew this line. She was like, Jason, I drew my first chart. I drew my my first chart. I'm really happy. Tell me what you think. And I said, Vibrant, that's correct. Look at you. Look at that. So she drew the straight line. Now on our chart, we have this one. It's listed as a, I told her it was a dotted white one on ours, but we can. Hey, what happened? Let me, I don't know what press, happened. Press Control Z. Control Z. To undo. Yeah, I wish there was one control button, control Z button in life. I think I saw a commercial once where somebody had the power to go back and say the right thing or as a trailer for a movie once or something. And so every time they said the wrong thing, they would rewind and then they would say the, they would say it and then they still got it wrong and they would rewind until they got it right. <laughs> and I said the, exactly the right thing. Wouldn't it be nice to have one of those in real life? so you don't make any mistakes but no all right here we go so anyway this is that line and we're gonna i'll make it light solid color let's make it a blue so you guys can see it okay so here's that blue line here that vibrant head and if you notice this is just based on core the wick hit there exactly so the wick hit exactly at 5, 5 yesterday, 15%. So this is still within its path down. The only problem is it's it did break out on the lower side as a phantom. So when we drew it as a phantom, we already did it here in this 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 dotted line. But I made minimize that dotted line because even though we were trying to stay underneath it for a few days, ultimately we broke out that next week. See, we just broke just above that line. And when we did, I said, okay, we may go up higher into the blue area. I didn't expect us to come all the way up to the key angle itself. But if you wanted to label it, give it a label key angle. Okay. So it, you want you can label that and this would be the phantom of that but we don't have to keep that anymore because price already broke above there. So I'm primarily still very bullish in the markets longer term because of this okay do you guys understand that does anybody have any questions for me before we look at cryptos anybody have any other questions regarding how i feel and think about usdt.d based on the data that has not changed going once going twice go ahead who is it what's the range where like uh, if it was just trading a range where 
What, the high of the range and the low of the range? Mm, right here. Uh, the highest price next week is going to be, or this week, is 5.04. And we're going to connect these two together, and it's going to give us cone shape. The lowest in this range is all the way down. Well, I'll just borrow one of these. 3.32 is what I'm expecting. So we may see not the full move down here, but somewhere between here and here, it's going to be along this path. I believe that's going to be the case. Has it already touched? What's the price that it already touched on that weight when it went up? Just at the just on just on the key angle, the price was 5.15 percent. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you think it could go as far as 5.3? This week, as far as, yeah, straight up, hold on, straight up, 5.07 is the max for this week. Now, it could go higher because we did get this wick a little bit higher, but that's primarily what I'm expecting. So as long as price is still within here and we're not getting some closes above that number, 5.07, then I'm not really going to have any big changes. I'm going to be a little concerned if we're above that number, but by and far, I still expect us to be within the sludge area or below the sludge area. So if Bitcoin was to go to 55, what would that look like on the USD chart? It would probably look like a spike into this zone up here, 531, 44, somewhere up here, but very short-lived. Already, we got a big spike above where we're expecting. So if this is... If the parabolic is at, is very active, and that's where it is, we got the spike all the way here, and price comes back down, and Bitcoin hit as low as 60, I think it was 62. So, but that's expected. So, we still have room to play up into this area solidly, and Bitcoin hit a low number, even spike, but I want to see these closes next week below there. But if it's a touch and go situation on Bitcoin, most likely it'll look like a spike somewhere here and then playing down, uh, continuing down. I see us continuing down absolutely because of the structures. I'm not concerned with all the little spikes, primarily what the structure is telling us. And this is well within its structure. Yep. Uh, Jason, yes? I'm just wondering, when it does finally come down to uh, the 3.14 area, is that going to be very short lived? Like that bull run will be like very short lived, like within a week, and then and then then we're going. To... No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I believe we're actually going to have time to see and collect a lot of profits on some of these cryptos. There's a few prophecies that that I can see that that where that is not kind of. I would suspect no. Because I really believe you're going to have time to take advantage of some of these crypto profits. Um, which some, this is still, I believe, all seed money season. I don't believe we're, we're hitting uh, really high, super high prophetic numbers first. I believe you are going to be able to take advantage of the seed money or at least collect it along the way. But those are my inklings based on the data. I have to combine this with some of the prophetic stuff we're hearing. And here's what I'm hearing from the prophetic over the few years. Number one, there's a very, and listen carefully, please. There's a very big prophecy from some reputable people in the prophetic communities about a missile strike from Israel to an underground facility that would expose it would expose a type of laboratory or some underground facility and this is a preemptive strike by Israel. And when this happens, the stock market crash crashes within approximately a week from there and then shortly about a week after that cryptos take a dive for a short time and i could see that happening i would see also an infusion of money in cryptos during that time because people would leave the stock market and try to put their money in a crypto but if money's slowing down by and far across the u.s that could facilitate that so this could look like a big spike now here's the weird things is I've been ex I talked on Saturday that the stock market is about to take a big hit. And I told you guys why on the daily chart. And I said here short term weakness has entered into the stock market. And we were right there at this price. 39,000. And I said look for us to come down. We're probably going to come down all the way to this blue area. 
Okay, I see that happening. Now, if we come down, even just a partly, and you and Israel, you guys all see what's happening with the news with Israel. If we do recover, and we recover to sword cut, I would be looking for a very sharp stock market crash at that time. Right now, short weakness has entered, and we need to find some type of sub supports before prices go up. And it's probably going to be this blue area. But if prices come down and bounce into this area, I could very much easily see during that time uh, this being anywhere close to the season or where the stock market crashes. Because in the prophecy, it said that the stock market crashed and they blamed it on Israel. But the truth is it was a fault of the United States economy and everything that was already set up. So this made me to look. I'll pay attention to the data. During the times when I see the weakness, the next big weaknesses appear in stock market. Maybe that's enough to bring uh, a crash. And I can see, definitely see that this is the times where we may see stock markets crash. Okay, I can absolutely see that. So what we're seeing today is that, and if you guys saw Prophet Robin's video, watch it. If you didn't see it, it's Prophecy Perfil. He'd been prophesying, him and his wife been prophesying for quite a bit about our U.S. going to war as well, getting involved with the war in Iran. And uh, I think we're ultimately going to side with Israel. If this happens near the election time, that'd be great. I, I think Trump will do that. Uh, otherwise, we may get in trouble as a nation by fighting that battle. But Prophet Robin's wife said, she woke up and she said, declare war. And she believes that this is the time that God's going to wage a war on unrighteousness and she basically said that there's a type of unholy war that they wanted to raise but then she said but I hear the Lord saying they want to raise a holy war but I'm gonna make my war first so I'm gonna declare the war so this means that Israel is gonna move first now if God is doing these things and Israel has a habit of doing these things we see last it was last week that Israel made a bomb that targeted the generals in the war and they killed like 12 of them Okay, they quit, they kill like 12 leaders of their army in a preemptive strike. So if they have a habit of doing a preemptive strike, then it's not long before I see that it's very possible this is the seasons when these things can happen. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if there were ever a time to look at the data and look at the prophecies matching this type of thing and seeing Israel make a preemptive move, it's now. Do you guys see that? They have a habit of doing that, the Lord declaring those type of things. I make my war. And then, by the way, if you combine this all with the dinar stuff, the dinar is supposed to revalue during the times after very close to the time when they make their preemptive strike. So if Israel shoots and they and Prophet Robin said they were going to a, a nuclear threat, a very real nuclear threat would be revealed and that Iran would admit that they have nuclear weapons that are going to attack. But it would come to nothing because God's going to help win the battle. But if this is the case, we can absolutely see how Israel would want to strike first. God prophecy, strike first, stock market season. Do you see how it's all lining up? It's all lining up that this is the times when maybe these things are going to come to pass. So therefore, going back to the question, what do I think about, this, about USDT.D? And I'm telling you why I'm saying this. And I know it's a long answer. But if Bitcoin goes up, USDT goes up, how much time do we think we can play down here before stuff really happens? How long do we really expect? I will say this. I don't expect it to be long. Okay. And if price is going down on a parabolic curve, it's just a hop, skip and a jump away. We can even come down to the bottom, supports, and then we should get a bounce. But look at the parabolic. We are going to have just a small window of time between this section here and here. How many weeks is that? This is just a small window of time. And I can look at the time frame. Look, June 10th. Now, I expect a big crash to start happening around June, the end of June. Okay, that's because I had a dream that it, the crash happened in a time of June, which means I believe we have time, but this would absolutely mean that by and far it would look like we didn't have much time before the next reversal. So 
this is what I see in the data, and this is what I see in prophetic timelines. Okay, so uh, I'm just letting you guys know what I see. Does anybody have any questions about my take on that? And then Mr. Maul, I know you raised your hand, but does anybody have any other questions? Just... Yeah? Me or Mr. Maul? Let's see. Who had a question? Because we can talk about this before we go into cryptos. Triple J, you wanted to say a comment? Yes, I believe that... Boy, I'm going to stretch it. I believe, and I just heard 39. It's not the first time. But it's not 39 now, I believe. I believe it's going to hit 120 and then might come down to 39. I believe that the higher it goes, the further down it comes. The, the further down it comes, the higher it's going to go. And it's not the first time that the Lord tells me that. I just haven't, going to be honest with you, I haven't felt comfortable saying it. And I wanted the Lord to give me confirmation. But the Lord's telling me to tell it, to say it. That's why I believe we're going down to 55. Because I, I, I came in late. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mull, you're on. Is he there? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my friend. Uh, I, I was fortunate to be connected to KuCoin Exchange when some of these corrections came in on Saturday. Yes. And I noticed something interesting. So being connected through my mobile phone and also being connected through my laptop, my mobile phone did not have any issues with placing trades, even though there was a lot of volatility. Whereas my laptop, I had two screens up, like a dual monitor, mm -hmm. and uh, not that many applications using my RAM. But I noticed that I could not see the trading charts when using my laptop. Like I could see the, how do I say this? I could see the buy and sell orders um, that were actively showing the green, green numbers and all that and the red numbers, but I could not see the actual, for lack of a better word, bar charts or get with their code. But when the, I don't know if I'm making sense, but that's all I wanted to say. I, I just thought to myself, I wonder if anyone else experienced something similar during that volatility on Saturday. That you couldn't see your data on your charts coming through. Yeah. Hey, okay. All right. Put it in the chat if you guys have that. What are you? Uh, oh, I, I. Huh? Ian? Going to thirty nine. I I don't see the, I don't see thirty nine right now. So it's very possible that if you're sensing like the higher it goes, the lower it goes. I would agree with that situation. I, I, I can see it falling. Once we hit that high, I think it's going to be a sharp drop. I think it's going to be a very sharp drop. But I think we're still going to have time to take some profit for a very sh for a short window. But if it does match that that very high 120000 if that's where the price is, I think it's going to be a, a sharp drop. And many of us are going to need to either position for scooping up cryptos at a low price. But I guess we're going to talk about that when it comes. But I don't know if it's going to be just the big crash because I expect the crash to happen in basically two phases. One to a low Bitcoin price and then prices to be stagnant and then to like a zero price for a very short window of time. So I don't expect it just to be all in one move. But it would look like a big move. But I think you're going to have time because I've heard prophecies that kind of show it as two separate moves. So I actually believe that's going to be the case. Now, I used to believe we're going to fall directly to 12, 11, but that was when we were at a low price. Now we're at a high price. I would say there has to be some kind of structural support that's been built. And well, we will find where that is at. And we'll spend more time after that during that next breakout session. So I'm not getting into that just yet because right now everything's about going to there. But once we're getting close to there, then I'm going to definitely draw new bottoms and focus a lot on those new bottoms. I just want to say, because I just received this, at some point, we're going to have one of those drops at 4,000. Okay. Yeah, but it's going to be like that, like what you're saying. It's going to be a wick. It's going to be a drop, 4,000. It's going to be like, and there's no, there's no other going down for that. Yeah, that'd be scary, right? That'd be very scary, but it's going to be really good for cryptos. The time when Bitcoin is going down, Shiba's going to have its move. Shiba's going to have a very big move. And I believe it's very possible that it's now in these seasons. 
Okay, I, I actually believe it's very possible it's going to be this month for Sheba. It's very possible. We'll, we'll get into that in just a few moments once we look at Sheba. Okay. And that, we'll just finish it up. Uh, the Lord just told me, hey, Janet, it's just going to be the dust settling. Okay. Settling. Reminder, this is just dust settling. Okay. All right. He's shaking unexpected. It's going to be unexpected. He's shaking, he's shaking all those whales. He'll be shaking all those whales. It's going to be completely unexpected. Well, it's yeah. come out of the blue. I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something, Triple J. 4,000 is enough to shake the whales out. I told you guys earlier that the moves that are within reason, like when we looked at the Bitcoin chart, okay, which I'll just show you one more time, just quick, quick. The moves from here to here are all natural. The people who can't take these moves are the people who are in leverage positions. Any moves here and here is still natural. All within this area is natural. If we spike here, anyone who's leveraged is going to get stopped out if you have short stop. Or anyone who's buying up and down here, if you're buying here, it's very painful to move here. But the, but, but the big people who are playing the long game, this is all in the... You can all see what they're doing. They're accumulating here at this zone. The, re, the retail market has a hard time holding on to the reins of the horse while the horse is getting up, getting up here. They cannot take a move to 4,000. The big boys can only take moves that are in a very high range, but they can't take moves like legitimately down there. They will, it's like the whole GameStop situation where the where we had major players, big banks, hedge funds, financial institutions, they were shorting Bitcoin. They were shorting GameStop. And the retail market found this out. They bought up Bitcoin and every single day they were in that negative position. They had to pay interest on that position that they had to short. <coughs> they were losing. I heard reports. They were losing almost a billion dollars every single day that the price of GameStop was high. They were losing a billion dollars every single day because they were they could not take that position. It's too expensive of a position for them to hold on to that range. So they were losing a lot of money. If you guys didn't understand what was happening, that was basically what was happening. It was called a short squeeze. The same thing happens in the silver market and that's more of incentive for the people to manipulate the price of silver, the precious metals market to a certain price. The, the, the more they can keep it underneath $22, the more they're in a good position because they've been shorting silver for so long. And what happens is the higher price goes and it breaks out of those areas, it's going to be very expensive because they're going to begin to the negative. They either can take a loss in very much billions or just hold on to the positions. But many of them were options trading. And so when their positions were expiring every single day or one after another, these positions were expiring, they were losing, they were losing their pants. They were losing their pants, yes. The sad part here is that there's a lot of people who will, it's like them being the, what was it, 19, uh, when they, the depression, there are a lot of people, sadly, they committed suicide and stuff like that because it's going to be a big hit, big hit. Mm. And it's all going to be God, big hit. Let me ask you, let me ask you a very legitimate question. Bilal, I see your question. We're going to have to cover it probably towards the end. Okay, so I just copied and pasted your question here. Let me ask you guys a question. During the first wealth transfer, Exodus, did the whales, who was the whales in the situation? Who was the big players who had the wealth before the, uh, before the Israelites got the gold and got all the wealth? Who was it? Egypt. 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 Egyptians. Did the Egyptians... Not just the government, Pharaoh, but the Egyptians themselves take a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. did they take a hit financially? Everything. Emotionally? Yes. Yes. Financially. yes. Everything. Everything is the answer. They Even took a hit. The shirt was taken off. <laughs> yes. They lost value in their gold and how? Through the crops? They yeah. gold, Their supply silver. chains? Yes. Cattle. The darkness prevented them from... Supply routes, okay? The blood in the water cut off supply routes. Financial collapse. Prices of grain, prices of this, prices of that. 
fluctuating to very strange prices, going through the roof, but then gold becomes basically worthless for a short period of time. You know why it's worthless? Because you can't do anything with it when you can't go out, you can't eat it. That's right. There's famines, the locusts are eating up all the land. I mean, it is, it basically makes gold worthless. And then what happens? They lose the war. Prices are dropped, brought to such a low price as far as gold goes. And now it's, it's okay to get rid of it for them. The Israelites knock on their door, as God said, and said, ask for the gold. They go to all the different houses and the people are like, yes, just take the gold. Bless your God and go. Bless your God and get out of my, just leave, please. We want the curse to be removed. <laughs> it's a similar thing happened in the Bible when they took the ark, when a foreign land took the ark of the covenant. I think it was the Philistines. And the people started breaking out in tumors. Okay. And I think there was something involved with the rats. I think some as well. But they started breaking out with all these tumors. So... They said, what should we do? All of us are being afflicted because we have the Ark of the Covenant of their God with us. So they said, let's give it back, but don't just give it back. Send them with the blessing. So let's make some gold. So they got to gold and they started making all of these tumors, the shapes of tumors. And they said, give all these tumors along uh, with gold in the shape of a gold as a blessing to give it back. Say, hey, we're sorry. And here's interest. So yes, we took your money, but here's some interest with it. Take your God, take your money, bless, here. here's what we took from you, and we're giving it back. This is the what the Bible says, the wealth of the transfer is laid up for the righteous. They're going to give the money back to the people. And did they take the money from the people? Absolutely. When did it happen? It happened when we went to the when we went off the gold standard. When we went off the gold standard, they printed money into oblivion, they kept all the wealth, and now your money that was once able to buy houses and cars and do all this stuff that at a very low price, now we can barely afford groceries. Now we can barely afford this. Now prices are going through the roof and the people of their land are being hurt. So to fix that, don't be surprised if the value of money becomes worthless in the United States and many places around the world because when the United States went off gold standard, so did the rest of the world. The rest of the world was like, oh, is that what the United States is doing? They're going off the gold standard? Why don't we do too? So every nation of the world started going and rans and basically ransacking their peoples, taking away their buying power. In some situations, they even made it illegal to own gold. And that happened even in the United States for a certain period of time. There was It was called the gold buyback. They were trying to strip the people of their wealth. It, it was wrong around the world, but it happened. If God is going to give the wealth of the wicked back to the righteous, then what he's going to do, I could absolutely see in him drop the power, the buying power of those who hold the money. Bring them to their knees, cripple them, but it's going to look scary for people in the wealth transfers, communities, and for the believers. It's going to look dark for a season. You're going to see some dark, scary stuff, but you need to just hold during those times. You need, there's a certain time when we stop trading. And there's just a certain time when we're just in position. There's a certain time when you stop trying to trade and you just hold out for the storm. And you're going to have to during those times. And we're going to try to get as close as to it as possible and even trade some through it. But by and far, we need to know and remember what is happening. You guys understand that? Okay, so I wanted to give you those comments. Lydia says, Erwin Garcia's wife of Minus Academy had a dream that Bitcoin would crash to 4,000. And uh, so I copied that. Thank you very much, Lydia. Critical formation. That's important. Yeah. Okay, Lydia, I put your name here in our report. Lydia, thank you very much. Pat says, today's interest rates are much higher than it was during GameStop issue. Yeah, I know. Pat says, yes, Triple J, let's pray for everyone. All right. All right. We'll include this conversation in the, the video. Let's take a look at Gala. This one's our good buddy Gala. We we can see that price is above a key angle. One of those being a type of round structure, the other being a peak. Uh, here's the round structure. Here's the peak. This is the angle by which we were we are using as our key angle. Placed up here, we should see support at those areas. We do see support at those areas. Those areas are closer to zero four two. Prices spiked below, but look where we're stopped at. We're here. Short-term weakness did enter on the daily chart, so look for us to play a little bit longer. We're going to watch the watch line. There was health that came into this area, but look at the weakness. Short-term weakness. 
Did not lose its ultimate setup, but definitely short-term weakness by prices phasing through this line here. That's actually a little bit bearish. So these were the prices where we're looking. This was this would have been the next breakout area above that watch line. That watch line is still active. Okay, still active. But the problem is we are now down here. A lot of cryptos came down into these areas when Bitcoin had its move two days ago. Okay. So it didn't lose its setup, but it did take a hit. Okay, so just remember that. Did take a hit. We're gonna minimize this line just for the photo sake. I'm sure it does. Okay, let me zoom in on some of these areas so you guys can see. Let me, we can delete that one. The back, the last support is going to be about right here, okay, based on the key angle, which means we have a lower price on the board. If it's today or this today, the price is 0, 3, 1, 0. If you're going to see Gala find support, it's possible we can spike a little bit low down into this lower area come down into this area but still we're finding support up here that would be very bullish i want to see that i also want to see ultra high volume on this down bar these actually these two but primarily this down bar on april 13th i really want to see ultra high volume because the bar is a down bar that closed up near the highs and the next near the middle and the next bar was an up bar primarily i would love to see ultra high volume on this white bar because that would mean new buying, new money, income, and gala at those prices. Let's take a look. And we got it. Good. So we can see ultra high volume on the down bar up closing near the middle. The next bar even smaller, not an engulfing candle, but even smaller on almost equal volume. So that's very good and very healthy. Especially if price can survive here. That means new money, new buying is coming in on gala to the tune of around, ooh, that's a lot of money. Uh, 2.7 billion dollars a lot of money on gala coming in it's in the billions here's the millions 500 million oh you guys can't see let me move myself away okay here's 500 million down here here's a two billion dollars okay see i believe it's gonna hit 16 dollars sixteen dollars very beautiful. And the Lord says 16. And I said, Lord, is it 16 cents or $16? <laughs> it says dollars. Sixteen dollars. Let's add that to our prophetic numbers for Gala. Let's our next target's fifteen to eighteen cents. That's sixteen cents. We had in number forty-four. Here we're going to add a new prophetic number. Thank you, Triple J. Here's how you guys can do it, by the way. If you have a, a horizontal line, I'm going to borrow this one. Just click on your line. Double click it. Go to coordinates next to text or style. It's going to be that third one up at the top, coordinates. I'm going to type up here, delete, put 16.00. In number two, I'm going to type 16. Dot zero zero. Hit both sixteen cents and sixteen. Okay, we already. Yeah, sure. We'll add another one. So sixteen dollars up here. Praise God. We'll type in the text. Dollars prophetic number triple J. And it's gonna keep going higher highs. I'm just repeating what he's the Lord's telling. Gonna go higher. Keep going to higher highs. April sixteen. <clears throat> April 15, 2024. So that's very interesting. If you notice, sorry. If you notice, I'm not looking at, I look at the charts, but I'm just, this is why he's saying, did you notice that it really didn't dump? It came down, but it didn't dump, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And that's what the Lord is telling me. Did you notice that it came down, but it didn't dump? In fact, just the opposite. It didn't dump when it fell, new money came in. And that's a good that's a very good thing. Now the watch line is still low, so which means it, it's still all down this angle. So we're gonna stretch that out, which means it can happen later. Here, anyone wanna guess the time frame? 
June 14, 2024. So I'm not saying it's going to take that long, but if price just only played in this area, it could play up until June 24th of this year, which is still good. We want it to this not to be like in 2025. We want it to be this year and that's this is this year. So that's really good. So we may see a big move in this time, in this season, or maybe in the future. But I've given you guys this arrow last time. Okay, so there's support here. And let you guys know that there's support. But set your watch line. If you want to set an alert on your watch line, I'm going to. You just click on your line that you're waiting for the breakout. Okay, draw that line. If all you did was draw one line, draw that line right there. And then we're going to click on our alarm button, our alarm clock. Right there, there's our, our bar that shows up when you click on your line. This little bar will show up. Click on the alarm clock, and then you can type in the text, Gala possible breakout area of the watch line. So if you're looking to get Gala at good prices, some of the lowest prices you can pay right now are on top of this blue line here. Okay, so that's basically the best prices you can get and prices are there. So anyone who's going to buy Gala, I put it for you guys last time in this color of what I was ex of what what we have and it was this one here. And so that doesn't change. It's basically 04 cents. Is anybody willing to pay anything close to 04 cents? I think it's a good deal. Okay. In addition, there's still an unhit target at the top for target number 1. Any other questions regarding Gala? Did it hit that 3 already? I didn't notice. Three, almost, very close to it. Okay. The number this week is, yeah, zero. Very close to the support. Okay, our last watch line was down here, by the way. At the two? At the sword cut of this area, price rounded, nice to the sword cut, broke the watch line, and then was the able to move. Two? The sword cut for this one is... The twos? No, zero four. It's basically right here. If you're gonna draw a sword cut, this would be a sword. The bottom sword cut's two one, right? Oh, that yeah, that that sword cut, yeah, two one three and two two. Yeah, that's what I'm at. That line is that the twos? Yeah. Yes. I hear two. So we might draw twos. I'm not, but I hear two. That I might drop to the twos, but it's not a drop of. It is just gonna bounce. It's not going to, it's not, it's just because pe people selling how it does, the, the market moves. It's not a dump or anything like that. It's just, it's just going to be a move. You think another touch and go? It might probably, yes. You know what? That matches a lot of Triple J. That matches a lot of the Bitcoin number. <laughs> yeah, because remember, if Bitcoin structure is such that it shouldn't hit that number. But it can, because there's already buying at the support. It can hit there and it would most likely be a touch and go. I can absolutely see that in the data because the buying is already in. So why would they build structure down? It doesn't make sense. The most that would really happen is it should be a touch and go. But if Bitcoin has that big touch and go at a 55K, I can absolutely see if this crypto went along with what Bitcoin did, take a look at the next move down proportionally, it should be about right there. That might be a very, you guys may want to have a, a, a order. And it's still higher price because 55 is a higher, it's a higher low, sorry. It's a higher low. Yeah, it's it not, is. Look. Yeah. It's just the dust settling. And it, when the Lord permits this stuff, it's to take people out. He's, the Lord is, these are God's numbers. These are not man's numbers. Because he gave us the numbers. And he gives us the numbers to let us know that it's his hand, nobody else's. And he's telling us before time, which is the wonderful thing. And gosh, I wanted, I just need to let this out. I just want to praise God because every number that he has given us, it's been right smack on the top. And it, to me, it's more pleasure in that than actually buying and making money some people this make no sense but every time that a number that he has given and it hits that number it's I can't explain it I can't explain it it's just amazing I don't know if you guys feel the same way but 
for me every time that the Lord gives a number and it comes smacks and hits it, it's just this will be never seems he never not seems not to amaze me. I'm very grateful. Hallelujah. All right, because now we base through here, the next the next high, the last high was here. And therefore, we're going to have a new separate angle, which is going to give us cone shape, which is going to be, that's going to be uh, the new shape. Yeah. Yeah. So I would be not surprised at all if we do go down to those areas, look for it to be short lived and a close somewhere above here. Okay. If it's next week, it may actually look like this, a candle that looks like this. Eh, it's hard to draw. Let me just draw it with a pencil. Okay, it might look something like this. Okay, it might look something like that if we do a touch and go. With the actual candle looking like that, okay? Don't be surprised if we get anything like this. And still be within the, the key angle on top. Um, that's going to put also the tar uh, because the angle going upwards, it would put us within target number one zone very quickly. Okay, which means if it's next week, we can basically be at the target zone and just be absolutely natural, which would be very interesting if that happens. So that very well could still happen within this month. It's very interesting to note these areas. Okay, support. Okay, any other questions about Gala? I'm me, I'm keeping my eye on the watch line. You guys know what I'm doing, I'm watching that watch line. But you guys may want to, if you're going to have orders on Gala, maybe put some orders there at the low part of uh, Gala, see what happens. Okay, near the zero two. Any other questions, Gala? Praise the Lord. Sean and Cat, the greatest desire of my heart is to hear his voice and live in his glory. Hallelujah. I love what, what Prophet Robin's wife, what's her name, Kate Kelly, Kate, Katie? She prophesied yesterday, and she said, for anyone who says they cannot hear God's voice, stop saying that. That's a lie of the pit, from the pits of hell. Because the Bible says, my sheep will hear my voice, and know my, know my voice, and hear, hear my voice. So you can declare that scripture. My sheep will hear my voice, and they know my voice. So declare that because it's a lie from enemy who's trying to put that on your head. So she said, just declare, I hear God's voice. I obey God's voice. I follow God's voice because the word of God says I hear his voice. So I hear his voice. And just start declaring that. And, and then don't be surprised when your ears are very sharpened because you can hear his voice. Amen. And you can. And I absolutely agree with what she said. Is there a, God, with God, sorry, is there a resistance at 44? A resistance at 44. 44 is about right here. I don't see a resistance there. Let me, let me hide my lines real quick. 44. No, I don't see a resistance here at 44. Maybe on a smaller time frame? Looks like it was an area. Of yeah, you know what? You're right. There is a resistance there. Yeah. I think it might go to 44 before it comes back down. Yeah, current. You mean 44 cents? Sorry. Uh, no. Or 044. Four. What current price are we at now? 043. We're at 43 now? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Do you mean 44? Four? Maybe it tops out at 44 before coming down again. 44 cents is going to be somewhere. Maybe it'll be 44 cents, not 43, 44. Four. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Obviously, it's... Here's... 4-4 four, four is the number you gave us last time. Did you hear it again? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But maybe that's just more for us to pay attention. Here's where I'll show you your number from last time. Here's your 44 cents. Which we have up there. Which is really close to target 3. Okay. Okay, cool. Keep an eye on that number might be a good place to take some profit initially for the next moves could be a sign that will come down yeah no I we are at 43 now so maybe it maybe it'll switch to 44 or that 44 number that whatever point 
uh, and then it might go down to the uh... one last thing about gala is that we put our launch token about right here at these prices and that interesting when we rounded to that area first we went up but if we come back down again it might be these prices one more time <laughs> because that's what triple j was uh prophetically talking about just right now which i think is amazing i think that's really interesting let's put a border around that in our prophetic color just so we can remember it's a sword cut plus a prophetic number inside trading inside yeah. trading <laughs> yeah very interesting let's move this up here since that's that would be a very good expectation all right let's look at some other cryptos fantastic i like gala i like spending some time at gala um people were asking about gold uh we looked at gold i want to say a few weeks ago gold is one of the most manipulated markets uh to look at um so it's, uh, some of the charts sometimes doesn't make sense but we'll do the best we can let's go to gold okay when you do look at the when you look at the gold i believe that gold and silver are gonna draw but it's gonna be god's purpose to make it able for us to buy especially silver and just wanted to get that up because i know it's getting expensive yeah i wouldn't uh, be surprised if we talk about it in the terms of wealth transfer that's supposed to happen okay so we heard prophetically by the way I want to say about a year or two ago, there's a lot, a few people in the prophetic community who did say that gold would drop temporarily because it would take a hit for a short time. And I couldn't see that in the data at the time. I said, this is, that's really strange. Why would it take, why would it take a hit? But again, as we had the conversation earlier, the wealth transfer discussion, I said, this is very much a possibility. I think it was like maybe a year and a half ago that we talked, that we really went deep into the gold. The Lord had shown me down to 500 in the days of 500. Wow. Yes. I don't remember. I, I, don't... I do very clearly because I, at those days I used to buy and sell gold. Let's put a prophetic number for you, Triple J. Oh my God, I'm really <laughs> stretching it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, five hundred dollars. I don't even remember that, but I know Soup was here, Michelle, all the oldies. But goodies, right? Yeah, very goodies. Yes. Not expired just yet, right? Yes, I mean, no idea. Uh, just kidding. Let's put the coordinates on here. Put that number on. Okay, current price of gold, 707. Wait. Can't be, oh no, that's the number, sorry. Current price of gold is 2,347. All right, there's our prophetic number. 56, like in 2023. Okay, so let me show you what i'm expecting with gold okay so gold is in this specific resistance up until just this past just this past month in march okay in march i put this a healthy breakout above this structure here is the safer healthy territory in alignment with a stronger monthly chart if price enters these areas price should move strongly to the upside so I'm bullish gold based, based on the fact that we're in this territory. I would expect gold to reach approximately $2,565. Okay, that's the number I gave you guys last time. It hasn't really changed. Um, I think it's basically the same exact price. Uh, I'm expecting it to move quickly to those areas based on our tiger analysis. Okay, so we did the tiger analysis by taking the tiger line from this area and duplicating it up at this top energy center up here and when i did it gives me a top somewhere around these areas okay can i ask you a question yes and excuse my ignorance what what can these people cause that bring down the gold how can they cause it for it to come down because I hear 2015 numbers. 
how can okay i've heard 27 max and they don't want it they want it to come down they're it's gonna be and god is gonna permit it because of us but it's gonna be man it's just permitting it because it's not good for gold to be so high am i correct oh, i this is what i'm hearing but i'm asking you why I don't that you can explain it to me better because I'm just speaking out what I'm listening when I'm hearing. I don't know. The only, I can understand I don't understand by which technique they're going to use to to bring it lower because in my mind I'm thinking this. If prices go down, gold should go gold should go up in value. Exactly. Oh, I know how. I knew you had an answer. The answer is going to be because the dollar's killed. And gold is if gold is measured in the price of dollars, and there's still not a gold standard implemented, the gold the value of the dollar would drop. But then we that would be inflation prices. Let me see. Yeah, because I don't understand. Because I'm like trying to figure out what he's telling me, and says how? Because the worst thing, if the get things get worse, silver and gold go higher. So what is it going to cause for those, those levels to happen? Because remember, they know at some point their time is up. And they're going to they're gonna want to gobble up all the gold, but they're not going to want to buy it at $2,500. they are not going to want to buy it at $2,700. they are not going to want to buy it at $1,500. They want to buy it as low as they can, and they're going to gobble it up. They're not going to pay those prices. So there's somehow some, it is going to be caused and God is going to permit it. Uh, this and I understand this is why God is giving us the money and letting the cryptos go high so we can have money to be able to all the, do the things that he wants us to do and to be ready that we may have money to be able to buy gold and silver. Um, I would like to consider the matter, pray about it. Maybe the Lord is going to show me something different. And let's, some, I would love to hear some of you guys' opinions. But I'm trying to wrap my eyes around it because if inflation hits, then the value would be inflated. Even though it's not the true value of gold, it should look like gold. The only thing I can think of is if the dollar completely crashes and then gold stops being measured in those, uh, maybe then the price of gold would... You know what? It could also something on the on the note. And it could also be it could also be due to famine, or some type of big hit that United States takes, where just gold is just not valued, and the other commodities are valued, like food, water, things that are for emergency type uses. That's the only thing that I can say for a time where it wouldn't be so much gold that people care about. It would be other things. That's. That would be food was gonna be the new gold at some point. And the Lord is telling me that. Food will be the new gold. Food yes. Venkat, uh, let's hear your thoughts. In general, whenever market crashes, gold silver crashes along with it. Because a lot of liquidations, bankers needs the selling of the gold. Then after crash moment is over, then actually gold silver will get picked up same thing happened for covid whenever covid crashed in the march 2020 silver went down to 12 dollars similarly gold went down then after that actually within three months silver doubled like a silver went up to 24 from 12 dollars to 24. so whenever market crashes generally gold silver also crashes okay. then immediately even the market is low gold silver pick up so yeah. then, then it might be tied to a stock market crash, which that would bring that would make a lot of sense. That would need to be a worldwide market crash because gold is not just you know centered in the United States; it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. So that would have to be a worldwide thing on that level. I know what you're talking about in 2020. I saw that too, but I'm but I know that that's because of the paper contracts that gold is traded in. 
but I'm thinking that in order for it to happen on things are different now. We had a different economy then and things are a little bit different now at this point because we're already in a recession and so forth and and um, now we have the BRICS nations in China and so forth. They've been hoarding up and loading up on, on gold for so long. In addition to that, there's been other prophetic about the elite losing their control over gold and silver, which we're actually watching that play out today, right? Because the, the ceiling of gold is around, what, what around 2200 And the, the uh, ceiling for silver is around $28 or something like that. We've already been shooting up above that so mm-hmm. this is going to be interesting to watch it play out but it, i think it would need to be more on a worldwide level because you know it's not and from what i understand wasn't it supposed to start like somewhere in europe somewhere or something like that so anyways thoughts i think i think you know have you going just a second i think that's a great comment tommy fantastic comment it would be it would need to be worldwide and that also matches that prophecy we talked about during our, our wealth transfer discussion at the beginning. We talked about that prophecy about when Israel's preemptive strike, a very short time after that, the market crashes. But I already told you guys since Saturday, the market's already in a position where it could crash very soon. Already we see a big drop because of that stock market. And they're going to try to blame it on Israel. So we're all within these seasons where it's very likely these things happen. But I also heard that when the stock market crashes, it's going to affect markets around the whole world during this time. For some reason, it's going to affect markets around the whole world. Maybe there's a lot of ties into the United States dollar. And and it's all part of the grand design where they're going to crash the dollar anyway, right? But I could absolutely see because it was part of that prophecy that the markets around the world would be hurting during that time. So I can absolutely see if the markets around the world are really big hurt and it's worldwide, then it would match gold taking a big uh, dump, which again matches the, the, the discussion we had about ancient Egypt gold prices also were at a, a very low because you could not eat gold during the famine. You couldn't eat it when all the our trade routes are cut off because the blood in the water, because of all of these things. You couldn't, because people wanting to just stay away from Egypt. It's cursed place, right? Darkness upon the land. Even if you're a merchant, you don't want to go to Egypt. So not only is people wanting to not do business with you, but you yourself are not able to do business outside. Gold prices very low before the wealth transfer in ancient Egypt. Don't be surprised if some of these types of events are allowed to happen by God to make it even easier for his people to conduct, to business, transact, and to get the gold. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Ian, you're on. Yeah, I just heard fear, and which is quite often what things go down on. I think I, I feel like maybe believe it's to do with war and uh, yeah this morning I heard black turkey <laughs> I was like so you know we got black swan I don't know what it means but black turkey yeah those are the things that I heard in relation to the yeah fear war and black turkey that's like a black swan but <laughs> something to do with the turkey whatever that might be there, that's a financial expression. I don't know. Does anybody know? I, that's a, tur- when a turkey has a very specific financial expression. I can't remember what it is. Anybody know? I have no idea, but I, I am going to say that not to fear because God literally, God himself is walking upon the land. God himself is walking upon the land. I see him as a giant walking in the land. And yes, there's fire everywhere, but there's also fire of his kids. And that's the blue fire that the Lord has shown me many times. Fire of justice and settlement. And then there's the fire of his children, of his spirit. Because his children are going to be full of Holy Spirit fire. And it's not going to be your church going, singing hallelujah fire is going to be miracles and wonders fire is putting yourself out there supernatural hot cold fire so be ready I mean, I, I get the chills so be ready and be how's the word susceptible susceptible so that's a horrible my english for goodness sake 
sustentable. How do you say that in English? Help me, somebody who speaks Spanish. <laughs> Susceptible. There you go. You go, Mara. She speaks Spanish. <laughs> hey, I posted what black turkey meant inside of the chat, if you're interested. Oh. I, yeah, could, I just took your notes about that right now. Uh, and if you could check the 2015 numbers too for gold. Yeah, and I heard fit five seven, and I think we should have a conversation about sh maybe shorting gold at some point because, like, for people Amen. with questions, might want to hedge rather than getting rid of the physical gold. We might want to hedge that. Um, oh my God, you're giving me confirmation because I heard trade gold. But not trade, like trade gold, like doing it on the platform. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. Also, that 5-7 number, I don't know. Christopher Harris apparently saw 300. I think, I don't know if 1,000 is pretty low. That'd be a double bottom, wouldn't it? But if you saw 5-7, if you ever saw 570, I'm feeling like you didn't, you wouldn't be able to buy it at 300. No way. I don't know where that 5-7 number comes in. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Yeah. Moira, Moira said Thanksgiving. That might be something worth looking at. Might be you looking. Turkey, what, do you, what, what, do you, what do you mean by Thanksgiving? We have an expression called Black Friday at Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. We always yeah. eat turkey in America. Every home in America has turkey. I don't think you can find one that no. doesn't. Even at a homeless shelter, they have turkey out, right? It's everywhere. If there's one place where people are taking care of the homeless at one time, it's Thanksgiving. And even then, it's turkey. We have and Ben kept be saying be ready. On be ready. on Thanksgiving, we have uh, the re the day after Thanksgiving in America. I don't know if it's like this around the world, but there's that's we have a a, a, a holiday, so to speak, called Black Friday, which is the Friday after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving always takes place on a Thursday in America, and always the Friday after. It's when the when the stores come into profit so all year long they just break even or take a loss by buying their merchandise and then they finally break even generally around christmas season so that's right so that the day is actually called black friday and that's when everything goes on sale online it's cyber monday and usually the whole week now they're doing it a little bit earlier but for the past 30 40 50 years or so i don't know it's it's basically called black black friday so you're hearing black turkey maybe it's a clue that we need to be expecting some of these things towards the end of the year which is also elections time in the united states so this is uh, might be a very interesting season where we'll see some very chaotic events we also heard yeah. go ahead i think it's worth reading that out the black turkey defined uh, a black turkey as an in event that is entirely consistent with past data but no one thought it would happen i think that's very relevant you know mm -hmm. um I think anyone's expecting gold to go <laughs> to a thousand. And twenty fifteen prices are down here at a lows, at very lows, one thousand dollars, one thousand fifty three dollars. So it's a very strong low. If there's past data that's in there, we'll have to look at. We'll have to look at this. I can't tell you this. The accelerations are very fast. So if we connect to these areas here, we're running out of time on the monthly chart by which gold has a chance to play. Let me show you what I mean. If I connect this structure all the way down with the last round structures here, this is going to give you a watch line for weaknesses or a key angle for weaknesses. This is very interesting. This this angle would be approximately here, but this these months here in September of 2022, we spiked below, came back up, and then sat down on the line as if it was like nothing ever happened. So this actually could be a hint down here that we're going to see low prices, either hidden Balor information type of thing, or just a clue that the line is not as strong as we think, but price is still moving alongside this line. That is very, very interesting. <clears throat> and, um, but that's where the angle should be. So maybe that's the clue. The first sign of weakness is happening. I would be looking for a big sell-off. I want to see ultra high volumes on up bars because that means they're selling happening in the markets. Let's see if I can find anything in the data here, the volume. I don't know if I'm able to see volume on this gold chart. Not this one. All right. XAU. XAG. No, XAU. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? XAU or Wanda. No, it's nothing that I see just yet. So I'm waiting a little bit longer. Yeah, 
Nothing just yet. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments, goal before we move on? It's a great conversation. I love these conversations. Just, uh, just feel, yes, there's an urgency to cover yeah. the how to short gold. Yes. And, you know, some people might be selling some gold and that's a massive hit if it goes back to a thousand. Okay. In the good. In my opinion, let it happen. In my opinion, please be careful shorting gold today. I think you got plenty of room before we hit our tiger supports up here or even Triple J's number up here closer to 27. We still got some more room, although the move is very quickly. Once we're in these territories, the up move can happen very quickly. And this would cause the big players to lose a lot of money if they're shorting gold or there's a gold squeeze, which is very possible because they have incentive to bring it down. Because every day, just like the silver squeeze, if they're short gold and they cannot suppress gold prices any longer for a shortened time, they're going to lose a lot of money every single day. Okay, so they need to cripple the economy to be able to stop that from happening. So stop your buying power. They have to shut you out from being able to buy. Okay, so don't be surprised if there's things that affect the masses. Okay, banks, when they're losing too much money, what do they do in the stock market? The government, United States, halts trading when the markets move too fast. Look at what Trump coin came out a few days ago or about a month ago, something like that. It was moving so fast upward that they halted trading on. They said, you guys can't trade anymore. That's government interference. That, that's wrong. It shouldn't happen, but it happens. When markets move too hot, sometimes the government actually tries to just stop the free markets from actually moving. And they do this to prevent markets from being manipulated. But I personally think it's to stop them, to give the big boys a chance to recalibrate and calculate and get a hold of that grip that they have on the suppression of markets. That's what I really suspect in my heart. Okay, Don't be surprised, but yeah, you may want to look. This is a monthly chart. You may want to uh, take a look at those numbers. Set some alerts out here. Let's set alert on this line up there, the phantom line. I'll put an alert at these prices. What do I do? Oh yeah, here. The alarm clock, gold at resistance area. Look for possible shorting opportunities. Take profit on gold. Uh, take profit. Those are some of the words you might want to add on your chart. But yeah, so when price hits that line, I'll get a notification on my phone and set an alarm somewhere route out those prices. Here's them. Mine is 2,565. Okay. Uh, Vancat said, Ryan Baker, I had multiple dreams. Let's see. Let me copy that. This is very interesting. Let's read what he wrote about Ryan Baker. I had multiple dreams about Black Tiger King last night. I believe this is true. Could possibly heading for an eighth. What is that word? Eighth? I don't know what that is. I was looking for a dream in the spring where I was warned of a oh, people of a white tiger moon and a BNB lion dipping into the 20s. I think both of these coins are very prophetic. Be careful as I'm still following my dream of altcoins at the bottom in the lottery machine. If you remember all the balls at the bottom dropped to the bottom and they had numbers seven on them. I dream about the two corn cobs. I think it represented two weeks. And somebody mentioned the other day when the altcoins would be at the bottom and a pumpkin flash before my eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bottom around Halloween or into November. And when all is said and done, 20, 2600 uh, price Dow, 15, uh, 1500 gold BTC high teens. These are things I expect but be led by the spirit interesting good thank you very much for sharing that vent cat okay tapua god bless all you let me just submit myself in jesus and hear his voice thank you tapua what a fantastic conversations we're having we're gonna go into some cryptos and then we'll save the rest for when we meet again on wednesday let's go to eight we're just going to shorten the part where i'm just typing in here Oh, okay. We're going to include all of this conversation here. Okay. Yeah, no worries. This is great. I said the same thing the other day. Almost the same thing. I was eating fruit. And I said, this is great. Anyway. <laughs> right, well. well, it's going to be wine. Water turn into wine. You watch. Those kind of miracles. 
Okay, where did I get this number? Here. That'll be like getting grapes. Okay, this one is uh, much older. This is very interesting. Okay. <clears throat> we had a key angle here at the bottom and price hit that key angle. That's what price is hitting. Let's do from the cores first, which is going to be a little bit a little sooner. Let's go to the weekly chart. Yeah, there it is. So here's our core key angle. It's up there. Okay. And that's what price hit. So this is very interesting that this one took a hit. Uh, ARB took a hit. And this is on the weekly chart. So this one moved out of position. This was one that did move out of position here after breaking its foundational wine line wine mm. so if you guys were watching this foundational support right here it tried to hold on but underneath this area this was your big giveaway when we close below on this candle here and the next candle we push up but look at the close it's still underneath that foundational resistance that's a big sign that weakness has entered into this market okay Big sign that ink weakness entered. We can also see a very that high level core on the 12 hour chart was still holding quite well. This one up here, and it prices were never able to break above. So the never next trade was not able to be triggered on ARB. So that's very interesting. That's where the next trade would have really been triggered and then above these areas here. But since this has been broken at the moment, I'm not gonna be focusing on this area no more at the moment. Okay. So that trade never got to get started, but we're in weakness. Now, where is a jumping off point for, for this crypto? Let's see. Where's the jumping off point for this crypto? I would say be careful with this one. We already have everything we needed for our first move foundational area one and two and three price built above there and already had its move. So this is not so much crypto that I'm so much interested in this time and season. I would like a setup. I would say watch your watch line. And maybe you'll get another setup somewhere around here. We'll draw it on the daily chart. But once once we're above here, then we'll have a chance to talk. Otherwise, I'm going to be looking for weaknesses if we're build above below these areas. So I don't really want to trade this crypto at the moment. But if you're looking right now, let's draw some sword cuts, by the way. Oops. And maybe we can. Well, we already we already broke above and drew that sword cut. So the bullish move has already started with weakness entering. We had a 12 hour watch line here. Price moved up back to those areas, but we never got the higher trade set up. So, yeah, let's go to that daily chart. Yeah, our last trade was just back up to these areas and we hit it only twice afterwards. No real big trade happening. Weaknesses. Weaknesses. Weakness number one, weakness number two. Yeah, just draw a new watch line, and I think I'm going to leave you with that, okay? So two weaknesses, one, two, this is natural. This is not a crypto that's set up really good for, for any kind of bullish movement just at the moment, okay? Uh, would I get out of this crypto right now? Even though you're at a phantom, I don't... I don't have a good enough reason to want to stay in this crypto. This support is not strong enough, even though it is a support and it's near an older sword cut. When price bounces too much on a sword cut, sometimes it can lose its steam. The sword cut can weaken after a while, especially if it already had a, a very big move upwards. I just don't like the whole structure of this as to, and this foundational line, just this double bottom, as a foundational line, I don't trust that strong enough to be the thing that can propel this into new heights. I'll be surprised if it does. I need a good reason to trade. And I'm going to say, let's go to a weekly chart and try to draw that watch line. Ooh, I can't really draw it on the daily chart, the weekly chart. The candles are too sharp. You know what I'll be thinking? Parabolic, probably. This foundational area here throws me off. All right, I'm going to do my best to collect as much of that energy as I can. Yeah, I'm going to say about right there. Yeah, it's going to be a straight, and I'm just going to start at the wick up there, and that's going to help me. So I would say that's going to be my watch line. I'm going to set my alert. 
price is close to a breakout look to see support and health in the background okay and that means that if price is here I'm gonna make sure that we either round it or did something nice or new money coming in new volume super high volume on the down bars I would like to see that in the history before I really trust this breakout too much but yeah I'm gonna set an alarm for that and that's what I recommend you do otherwise and the breakout price for today is one one dollar and 41 cents one dollar 41 cents I'm not really gonna expect too much after uh, until then okay any other questions regarding ARB? Yeah? No? Going once? Going twice? I hear slowly but surely. Oh, good. Slowly but surely. Does it have an all time high? Yeah. Ooh. We'll expect all time high numbers. That's a very high number. That's fifty-eight dollars. I don't even know what coin you're talking about because I've been busy in the kitchen. So I can tell your mouth sounds like you're eating something delicious. <laughs> All time high, huh? This is a crypto was trading at fifty-eight dollars at one time. It's two dollars current price is two dot eighteen. And here, all time high. And that number is fifty. Eight dollars. Wow, that's a very high number. So expect it. Coming. I guess slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah. Now I get it. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you for letting me speak it out. Come. All right. Let's move on. CSOR. Who asked for this one? Thank you, Nardu. Okay, we got CSPR. CSPR has not lost its setup on the weekly chart. Actually, the key angle does need to be ad adjusted. Let's go to cores and bring it down just a hair to count for this core. There might be some weaknesses. Hold on. It will come down to its bottom number and then go up. Sorry. <laughs> come down to its bottom number and then come up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There is some weakness. Short-term weaknesses entered this week. I would get out of Casper. Look at the cores. Sub justice. Okay, so if we're counting this one that has lost its setup. Dang, this one took a hit. This one lost its setup. Okay, so this one, I'm going to make sure I, I add that on here. Make sure I do if I look at the core on the weekly chart from here, core, wick, core, this candle fell down and that was okay. But the product is we closed underneath the line. And this week we're pressing up against it. That's actually bearish. Okay, that's actually bearish. Look at, let me show you. Do you see it? Look at it on my screen. See, we close below this line here. That's the support. It could not, the support couldn't hold. And now this week it's passed, came right up to this line and get here. So this is going to be one of the best prices you can get to get out of this crypto. Okay, this is going to be a crypto that did lose its support. But the entry wasn't the best anyway, because the entry was closer to here at the bottom. Price came up, came back down, came up, came back down. But now we're in a negative territory. So this is actually a bearish, uh, uh, this is actually a oh, oh, weakness. I would say you may want to, uh, you may want to get out of this crypto, see if you can get in at a better price. Thank you, Triple J, who also just said, hey, price will go down to its bottom number. Here's its bottom number. And it's going to bounce back like, like a spring. Well, hit its Boing. lowest number like and bounce back like a spring. People like Casper. I don't know what even it is. But it's not Casper the ghost. 
these numbers are close to 0 0.022 one area okay for that low but it was a wick down there otherwise we're we're going to be and I want to check flats to see if flats are at work real quick Four flats at work wick flats at work flats at work here yeah flats are at work this is interesting this is very interesting let me fade some of these away okay flats are at work which is a very good thing to happen because that's going to tell us where we can primarily expect prices to go to and the rule is when we see flats at work in one part of the map look for flats to be active multiple times in the area here's an example core on the weekly charts we spiked into this wick area okay so that's one we almost came down to that exact area now here's the next flat here's two that are in the same places one two okay so there's lots of flats here's another one that's active and at work just so you guys can see if I take this flat and I bring it over here I see responses here if I take it and bring it to the wick side I see responses here and here so this is one that flats are at work and if we if, if you don't always see flats at work but when they are pay attention to them because sometimes you can find some good entries or some good exits for prices depending on where you're at in this case this first flat was basically hit prices came up i'm going to be paying attention to these two flats next triple j's number that's a flat okay if wick side if core is hitting and wick side's hitting wick side's going to be that all-time low number and we may be looking to see prices all the way down to zero two two yeah the zero two two area don't be surprised if that's the case with this crypto and we can update the new watch line by the way will this be purple up well, this crypto is not so attractive to me but because of the sword cut oh uh, because of the sword cut around for two or like a break to the higher side it would feel safe safer okay we can delete that all right, this one is parabolic. Core, core, it's gonna look something like this. I, I think we might be able to get that parabolic. Let's see if I can get that angle. Oh, it's gonna be higher. Ooh, can I get all of this? There we go. All right, so this is going to level out approximately at these prices here. So I'm going to give you that level out. This one's a little bit of a challenge, but this is going to be when this crypto should take off. It should be around these prices of 40 zero. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be, if you guys want to put an alert at these prices here, that's when I'm really going to pay attention to this crypto. I'm going to place it in yellow uh, in this area. So I want to see prices get above here and then we can look and talk about this going up okay so it's gonna look something like maybe that where we break above come to these areas and then we can go up and start taking care of business and I was able to get core wick and I got these areas a little bit like confirmation and this is where it levels out which means if you're down in these prices here but prices comes up the real trade is going to start when we're above this area and then it's going to have a chance to go up and that's going to be very beautiful and that's nice it took me a little bit to find this but this could take some time this is on a monthly chart it could happen a lot sooner but this is basically where the essence of that area is where this parabolic is and it's on top so if we have if we're going down now on the weekly chart look for us to be let look for us to go down and then you may want to scoop up some cspr at these prophetic numbers and then you're going to see it maybe rise up to these top numbers here at four, 046 and 043 area. Okay. And then one word above there, that's when the real move should happen. Can you give us the prices of yeah. the flats? Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, let me give you this first. 
parabolic <laughs> level off at 0, 4, 6 and 0, 4, 3. Alrighty. Praise God. Let's give you these prices down here. Just highlight some of these. Let me just type them in. I will give you those. Point zero two seven five two five and that zero two two number I already gave you guys. So those are where we're looking at. So I wouldn't be, I would be expecting these two events. Okay. And I'll take a picture of that parabolic so you guys have the good picture. Anyone have any other questions? This is a monthly chart. So remember, if you want to draw this, draw it on the monthly. Change your time to monthly. But it's going to reveal the biggest story of what's really happening. Crypto is like gambling, but we got this map. It's like cheating. I saw that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me scroll down. I heard snap out of it and focus, says Ian. Snap out of it and focus. Triple J says, sorry for the corn. God is good. All right. Let's continue with cell. Celsius. We're going to use OKX because we got 2021. All right. Ooh, strong parabolic. Oh, this is very interesting. Oh, ah, very interesting. Very organic, distorted uh, parabolic okay so this is very organic the curve is very smooth but we have hidden battler that we have to deal with up here and that's going to be very easy to plot so we're basically going to plot this number here and i'm going to make it this blue flat and uh, type in hb number one it's one at one dollar 84 cents to 183 area yeah 183.1.84. Then we got another hidden battler at the cores in these areas on the weekly chart. And the price is going to be, this is going to be HB number two, $3.76 to $3.73. It's going to hit higher highs. This coin dump a lot when the coin dumped? I don't think so, right? Yeah. It did? Mm hmm yeah you mentioned 2022 correct Ye on other maps they only have up till 2022 did it went really high what was the all-time high the all-time high this is this current price is 15 cents the all-time high was seven dollars yeah that's a very yeah yeah then i go back to that nine dollars actually Nine dollars on one exchange, Dean. Yeah, it's gonna go back to like eleven to be more precise. Yeah, here on this map we got eight dollars. Sorry, eight dollars, and that's five thousand percent. Yep. That's a lot. We'll get ready. Yep. Mm. Now I know why I hear higher highs. Why? Because it's gonna go to all time high. Uh -huh. Okay. How much was it in 2022? In 2022, we were. Was it that high? What was the, it? In 2022, in September, we went. We hit as high as six dollars and nineteen cents. There you go. That's your answer. Six dollars. 2022 prices. 2022 prices. Very interesting. Now, on this crypto. Let's put on targeting system along the way down to covering this area here and we got a big target back here I should say it's not so big but there's a target here around uh, these prices which is approximately five to four dollars. That's interesting. We got another target 
three to three thirty six to seven seventy one cents. I believe that because you said higher highs. I believe that it's gonna go higher than its highs. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then it's all time high, higher than it, yeah, higher high. Come here. Today, isn't he? Yeah, you're hearing a lot of things. Fear. And you turn on the heat today. <laughs> Praise God. Talk about inside training. God is so good. Take a look along the journey, my friends. This hidden target number two overlaps hidden battler number one. So I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on this up here near the $3 price. Okay, and I think you guys will too. It will it'll be a great help along the way once we start getting into those territories. Visual order, bring to front. So I would put a lot of emphasis on the 373, I'm oh, sorry, the 376 number up there. Yeah, I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis up there. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do to get up there and when is it gonna happen? Right now, you're in short-term weaknesses. I think you're probably going to be able to get some better prices. This one lost a setup. Not that it maybe had the best setup, but it's at sword cut right now. So let me show you. Here's sword cut, and that's where you're at, right there. So that's a good sign. That's a real good. That's a real good thing to do. We don't have a a, a watch line at the moment. I'm going to be paying attention to that. I also think flats are at work. For this crypto here's the core and it gave us a good resistance here and here's the wick down here so i want to see if that was actually support as well and it looks like this wick is around where price was close to finding support but not exact but cores definitely i should say so i'm going to fade this one away here and therefore i'm going to look to see if there was any other big flats at work and there was one back here. So that would have been the next area and that one was hit as well. Okay, so the cores are really active as flat resistances. And you can see again, so here, okay. I wanna see the energy expelled from all of those areas. So what I'm going to do at this point for cell Celsius is we need to identify where the entry would be. And right now you just lost it. So you want to make sure that you're really careful about buying this crypto right now. Let's, oh, hold on. Oh, there's still, this one's still set up. Okay, this one's still set up. That's a good sign. Core. And now let's connect the weekly, the wicks. And this is gonna give us a clue about what's gonna happen next. Okay. All right, so the wick. Zilius mean? I hear Celsius Zilius. Maybe I'll make zillionaires, I don't know. This wick is really responsive, but the fact that, <laughs> I'm going to know. The wicks are really responsive, but the fact that we got a close and we didn't get any support on there, tells me I'm gonna be a little concerned for Celsius if we're getting to the underside of this area. I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like that. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be thinking this area. As far as entry goes, I need to have a good enough reason to buy here. Now let me duplicate this here, no response. Okay, so I don't have, let me go to WIC, even the WIC side. Yeah, I'm not really seeing too much verification at the key angle, phantom. So I'm not gonna put too much effort and emphasis on this phantom. I'm gonna actually decrease the size. I'm gonna type in this. This is a support, but no verification. Not a strong support. Okay. So this is a support. This is a support, but there's no verification. So I'm not going to put too much emphasis on this as a bottom saying, hey, yeah, this is the bottom. This is probably good prices to buy. So be careful about that one, okay? Um, I would say, yeah, I would say you're in at the very most delayed territory. You're playing in this area 
and I just need a better entry and I just don't have it right now. So be careful. And uh, let's watch this one a little bit later and see if we can get an entry later. And I'm just gonna put those as my closing comments. This one, this crypto, I don't have a confident, conf strong entry that I can see on the map at the moment. I expect the support to not hold, but I would like to visit this map in the future to find new bottoms. Okay, anyone have any other questions regarding CSPR? Not CSPR. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I think you're in delayed territory for Celsius. Okay. Yeah, most likely we're gonna play under here and then I need to connect them. I know where the entry is gonna be. It's gonna be here, but it's gonna be messy. But yeah, that's the essence of this move. It's round structure here with hidden valor, but that's where we should draw it. Since this is the new place where we went to the bottom, this is probably gonna be our watch line. But it's not a bottom, okay? So I'm gonna just gonna put an alert on there and remind me to watch this. Uh, Re-evaluate this map. Not a good one. Not one I'm so interested in, okay? But there's definitely hell. This parabolic here is a good sign that we may build that sword cut, but I wanna see something in the volume. I wanna see that money coming in. And right now, the money that we see is ultra high volumes on the up bars near this top, which indicates they're selling, there was selling that was going on, profit taking that was kept happening on the up bars, the next bars were down on little less than below average volume. So I wanna see new, new, real new money coming in. We do see some ultra high volume closing near the middles on both of these bars here. So there may be some buying coming in, but again, I still just don't have the entry. Maybe the entry is gonna be some something along the lines like here. Maybe, possibly, okay? But there is some buying here, that's, that's good. Okay, small buying in proportion okay not counting it out yet but not my cup of tea zeal moves beyond passion having a great energy and enthusiasm in pursuit of cause and objective zeal seals okay good let's look at heart <laughs> I just want to say to expect the unexpected with zeal. With the zeal. With the zeal, it's gonna oh. be zealous. Oh, with the, with a zeal, okay. Oh, whatever it's called. Cel <laughs> cel Celsius. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, key angle still at work, I believe. It needs to be adjusted a little bit lower <laughs> to the wick side. Core wick. Let's see. Wick is going to be important here. Okay. Which means this is going to come down just a slight. I believe it's going to have an aggressive move. Just also. Wick. An aggressive move. All right. So this one is, this one's still in strong position. Okay. We, I want to mention this. Uh, I talked about it a few months ago, maybe about two months ago. I said, the higher these cryptos goes, if Bitcoin takes any short-term hits, these many of these cryptos are still gonna be in strong position if they're able to break over many of their hurdles. And this is one that is similar. This is one that, this is the shape that it's been bouncing around in. Here's the bottom, here's the top. When price broke above, if Bitcoin takes any hits, what the moves do is they only bring it back down to support to rally the troops. So this is still bullish. Heart is still strong in this example. In addition to all of that, look what happened to Heart when it did take its hit last week. We came down 
to its support and just came right back up with this is nothing happened those are the kind of cryptos that are strong okay so this is a crypto that is better than most okay this is a crypto that's better than most look for the ones that have those by the way this is our support that we drew last time okay so that's nice this is something we're looking anywhere close to these prices are actually good prices and those prices are all the way as low as one cent but look at the move all the way into zero three cents just in one week I so, believe it's gonna come down and then co go back up again. Good. Because if it can, especially if Bitcoin takes its move to 55, you're gonna see another dip down into these areas. Okay. You're gonna see another dip down into these areas, but it will still be in a sub in in a, in, a, in on top of where it should be. So that's a very good Do you sign. See it back here? Huh? Hold on. Hold on one second. Do you see it back like in these numbers? Um, I don't see it like that, um, but it can. That num that is still in play as a, as a backup support. If this okay. fails up here, you can spike down here. Especially if we spike down here, I'm going to be very bullish. If we just close in here, then we're going to need to draw another watch line, which means we'll have problems in the future up there. But if we just spike down here only, if it's a touch and go type of thing, that would be really good because then prices can really still go up really easily yeah i, I see it just most uh, more as a move not coming down and staying there it's just gonna be a move do you sense right? it's gonna come down to some of these lower yeah i, don't, I can't even see the numbers to be honest with you, you. don't need I to see the line and do... then i just the lower starts talking do you see this area is that what you're seeing that way yeah where i where i draw the line okay it just might come down that that what i really see it hold on let me get that most likely, I believe it's going to come here, but it's possible that it will hit here. Okay. Okay. Wait, draw it again? You said it. I feel and I understand that it will hit here. Okay. Okay. That's but a big one. I also understand that it could touch this right here. Wow. Do you see that happening now in these times and seasons? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's dangerous. I'm talking about now, but it's not going to be like sitting there. It'll be a touch. I believe that if we go all the way down to 55, it will be here. But it's just going to bounce back. It's not going to stay there. It's just going to be buying opportunity. Okay. And you're talking about this crypto, hard? Yes. Hard. Wow. Yes, okay. Wow. Very interesting. But, Very interesting. Yeah, but I understand it, it, it right here. That's where I see the main. What, what can I use? I hear energy. Mm -hmm. Is that a word for trading energy? That's the words I use because I use those to look for trends. So yeah, that's what I, I energy is like right here. I see it right there. Down here at the bottom here. Yes, I, I feel like. The energy is right here. Strongest energy. Right there, this one in the middle, this one? Yes. Okay. And if, if it drops draw, a lower, it's not a bad thing. It's just a bounce. And it's just going to bounce harder up. That's all it's going to do. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Let's add some of these notes. I'm glad that you understand what I'm saying. That you get I'm trying to. <laughs> well, you, you you get my, you get it. Even God is talking in your language, not you know when you say yeah. um, when He says energy. You know, my, some people might take the word energy in the wrong way, but at the end of the day, it's God's energy. Look for lower prices in this crypto heart. It seems to be. This should be around uh, linked to Bitcoin 55, linked to BTC 55 event. From what I understand, what you're saying. I got a question for you. Has it bounced there a lot? No, but if the Lord's telling you to, I should focus on that point for energy. Then I'm going to perform Tiger analysis. He says, look at the volume will connect everything together for you. And this is not obviously the first time we talk about volume it's always some volume it has something to do with right there this is where what buying was coming in this crypto there was accumulation that was happening in this area 
And then we get back down to these prices here, and there's still some supply. No, no demand still yet there. Uh, says, look, you have the eyes of a needle. Pressure or work says there's high pressure. I know what to do. Whatever that means. I know what to do. The what is like in this like section? There's high pressures in those numbers. Whatever that means. I hear ten dollars. We're gonna have a big bounce and big moves, and I strongly hear ten dollars. Wow! This ball following me. I'm not getting visas or anything. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, I'm in volume at this time from here to here it's very possible that there's still too much supply and they wanted to bring they would love to bring it down back to these areas because this low here and i'm going to point this out for you guys in the volume this low here is where a lot of accumulation was happening there was some buying that was happening here and it was over a longer period of time. So that's very good for this to happen on in, on this down move. And then when we came back down to these areas again, even though it wasn't as low as it was before, it was low. But I would want I wonder it would make a lot of sense for them to try to bring it back down to these lows over here because there's still a lot of supply in this area. So don't be surprised if they do bring it down there. It would make sense. We would like to see some buying happen in this area. Either ultra high on the down bars, ultra high volume, and then ultra high on the back to back up bar. That would be a new incoming buying in those areas. Uh, or we're going to see no demand. But most likely you're going to see some buying taking place in these prices. So that might make a lot of sense. The other thing I can notice about this crypto if we're combining some of this prophetic information is if we are drawing the tiger energy it would look like this the dashed line so if i add this and i and i click on tiger line all right just add tiger so you guys can see let's add that to the left okay so if this is our tiger line here okay then we're going to add this to the energy centers on top and on bottom. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'll add this and I'll extract it here. So first thing to confirm that it's the case, I like to see verification. So if I bring it up to this energy center, I see support happening here in these areas, which is great. I've already done a type of tiger analysis on this before. And the last one I see is supports closer to here. But this has been expanded a little bit more to match the monthly angle so these numbers right here that i already have as tiger lines they're going to come down that one's going to come down this one's going to come up i'm also going to check wick side just for just to see and i do have a little bit of support over the past weeks up there so that's interesting but let's keep it at course for right now because that's usually the most important this one doesn't need much adjusting just bring it down to here and let's now bring it to the lows so for the lows if we're going to be hitting down there i got one here and then i got another one here in that zone down below and therefore those prices are zero zero seven so that's an that's a match 
And uh, the last one we're going to add is going to probably be close to the same area. And this will be great because this is the Lord helping us do some prophetic training, prophetic insider trading. And it's going to be here. So I see below this target system is still at work and it's a lower target. So we're going to change this to be pink. The box. Yeah, go ahead. When locks, the Lord said 80 to 85 cents, correct? That it would come down there? Yeah. So when it did come down, there was one wick. It touched, it did come down to 82, but it, there was a wick that touched 77. So it even came down, but it was just a touch and go. That's what's going to happen there. Nobody saw that coming. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it so looks like... Be that kind of touch and go. So we need to consider all of these things and it's great we can combine prophetic stuff going on because what we have is external factors at play. You guys understand external factors are when Bitcoin have big wicks or USDT.D have wicks. The cryptos and what is happening with those cryptos is really more important than the short term weaknesses in some of these now sometimes we can catch in some of them some, sometimes those weaknesses will cause the setup to break but there's still a lot of cryptos that have not lost their setups there's some that have lost their setups but we also are really grateful if the lord has given us prophetic insights uh through various means or the triple j or em out of god or other people in the communities where we're starting to see on these points on maps and they line up so we can act accordingly because this is going to help some of us so it may be it may if it's a me this might be a good place for entry near the zero seven near zero zero seven area because if i look at that target system this target is still active somewhere down here and it's bigger and it seemed it got bigger when we when i overlaid it this is a target okay and so i'm going to put this here as target low Number one, and this is going to be interesting, 0077 seven to 0056 area. That was the number that it came down, Flux, 0077. Seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I would be, if we're going to be looking at a prophetic move, it might be something like here. And let's make that in a prophetic color. We might see a prophetic low here. And that would mean price should lose, I guess, some of its setup. So this is definitely external and very painful. Very painful. Okay. It's not going to lose its setup because it will only wick there. Yeah, it shouldn't lose its setup. And I need to make sure I add that as a comment. And bullish engulfing, you see that candle that just dropped. Um, it came straight back up. Yeah. And close. Well, probably. Yeah, it's going to be just that. Exactly that. This crypto is strong and did not lose its setup the last time BTC had a bad day. It came down and came right back up. This means it was affected but strong in its own right. Own right. I can see in the data that the lower target is active still. And this would mean, and this area is still close to the lower key angle around. And those prices are around, if it's in this season, it's going to be around 009. 0 .009. A spike down to the pink 0 .007 area is not far from its nearest support. Okay, so what does that mean? Look at my chart. Everybody look at my chart for just a sec. If prices are bouncing in here, and this is natural, 
the spike only needs to be this far. It doesn't necessarily have to be a spike all the way from here down to here. The spike can be really from here to here. And as long as price is closing in these zones, you're still trading in a very strong, healthy way. Not only are you in this uptrend, but you're also still above this blue line which is part of this down move and that's that would be very that would be the best case scenario so if you see that happen whether we're holding here or we're holding just a little bit higher both of those are great scenarios so i'm going to be very curious about either this close in green which i already gave you guys those prices last that area and you have the price it's the, the 016 or if we close here on top of the yellow and i'll give it to you as well uh, on top of this red area both of those are very bullish scenarios prices can this is a crypto that can take the heat and that'll be really good because if you can get these prophetic prices you stand to probably do a, uh, a very well now triple j what number did you say that it was going to go up to this one anybody remember I think it was ten dollars, but now I'm hearing one cent, one dollar, ten dollars. One cent, one dollar, ten dollars. Okay, the percentage of money that's on the table from this crypto that, and that's definitely profit numbers. One cent, which is and here. And he's gonna hit three dollars too. Three, I hear three ten. That that's definitely a prophetic wealth transfer numbers. There's a few cryptos we've been here prophecies about one dollar, ten dollars, a few of them. This one's close to ninety five thousand percent. Wow. Who took whose part now? Yeah, this Who is Ian's coin. Part now? <laughs> you also hear three ten, you said? Yes. Now, I, I want you to know something, guys. The move down and the move up from here to the all-time high, from the lowest to the highest, was already 40,000%. Okay, somebody, if anyone shorted this, they made 40,000% if they were on the right side of, of, of history at that time. The move from here to here is 40,000%. There's a lot of people that deem some of these type of moves impossible, but you gotta think percentage-wise, this, this is the things that happened already in the past. And we give lots of examples. Sometimes the, move, the moves were in the very high thousands for certain cryptos. I just want you guys to know that, yes, somebody somewhere is able to make those monies. Okay, somebody somewhere is making those monies. Here's down from here to up here. There was already a thousand three hundred and twenty percent move. One thousand three hundred twenty percent. Some people who bought here and were able to sell it at the high. So there's a lot of wealth that's on the table for some of these cryptos. Before you guys just say, oh, that's impossible. You know that move is one thousand three hundred. Okay, so just it, not for everybody to believe. They're already saying. Oh, hold on. They're already saying. I heard it so clear. He said once, give me a second. So I want to say it exactly the way you said it. It's going to lose two zeros. You're going to see one cent coming, two cent coming, three cent coming. He said one cent coming, two cent coming, three cent incoming. That's exactly those his words. So two dollar two cents would be a big clue for when we hit three cents. So that'll be interesting, as those will be journeys along the way. Okay, good. If you want to set an alert <clears throat> anywhere close to these prices, I would say def you're probably going to get down to these lows. If you're in these areas, the targets are very close. Look for you to hit those lows. Set an alert at those prices. Uh, heart entry prices reached okay so yeah i have an alert in these areas if you get though uh, if you get there um this is a crypto you can get on kucoin uh this is a crypto that you can get on 
Let's see what exchanges. It's humans. You can get it on KuCoin. You can get it on... Yeah, I think really only KuCoin. I'm sure there's more crypto exchanges, but at least this is where the data is at. Go to uh, coinmarketcup.com. Dot com. Type in heart. Not white heart. Humans AI. It's one of those AI coins. We heard a lot of things about those AI coins. It's going to change a lot in the future. Here we go. We got it on markets. Those are the markets. Uniswap. Gate.io. MEXC. Okay. Anyone questions human AI? Yeah, I, I really Sorry. like it. I keep hearing. <laughs> I, I really like this one. Yeah, oh, there's so much I could say, but don't sleep on heart. He told me to buy 5,000 at a level, and then I clicked my remaining balance, and I could buy exactly 5,000. So I probably, I don't know if Bitcoin's going to drop like all of a sudden at some point, but i probably buy some at 92 and hope that I'm able to, yeah, get a bounce on that and then sell some of that and then buy some again lower. So I'll probably aim to buy some at 92. At 92? 92, nine yeah. Zero, zero, nine two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's close to these prices right here. That's good. Yeah, so hopefully I might be able to catch a bounce there and then, you know, get some uh, more at the low. I, I believe he's saying to, what's the word? Something about like getting enough liquidity for this one, like basically making sure I've got a lot of funds to put into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yes, yeah, so I'll be targeting all of the different levels that we've got there and just making sure I have enough uh, funds available. To, Is that about uh, what, like three hundred dollars? No, uh, it's only something like forty dollars at nine two, and then oh. you less. Yeah, nice. um, but uh, that that's just for that first level. So although I might only buy forty forty five dollars at this level, I'm I'm probably looking to put about three or four hundred in at the uh, lower level. Just remember that he said one cent, two cent, three cent income. He wants me to repeat that. God. Okay. All right. We're going to finish up with Shiba. We have other requests. I, I have a question. No, I am not an economist. Somebody asked in the chat, are you or were you an economist? No, I was not. Sean and Kat says, is it a worthwhile risk to use KuCoin, which is by law not legal in the United States? Do you just use a uh, VPN? You want to minimize your time on KuCoin because you can, if you do it, yeah, they're going to have you KYC and uh, if you, they're going to keep asking you over and over again, hey, verify your location so we can give you more better, so we can give you more better uh, advertisements. There's a few exchanges that do that. They really try to push you every single time to verify your location. Be very careful. Mr. Mall went as far as using two VPNs at one time to avoid that until he was able. Because anytime you access KuCoin from the United States, you're going to get flagged. Even if you're KYC from another country. If you have one of the Palau IDs. There's a few of us in the group who are using the Palau ID. And I, I recommend using the Palau. Look it up. Palau ID. And that's a way to get citizenship like in the country of Palau. And then being able to KYC from there. And, and I've heard some success stories from some of you. But, but even some of you who are foreigners and you access the United States, KuCoin will flag you and make you try to jump through a few hoops. And there's a few exchanges that will do that. If you have VPNs that will back you up in those areas, it prevents you from getting flagged. Because even when we were living in the foreign, in, in other countries, we were still getting, if we accessed a VPN, like watching movies or Netflix from United States using our Netflix account, but we were still living in the Philippines at that time, we were still getting flagged in KuCoin system. So I want you guys to just know there's some hurdles you're going to have to use. So, yeah, so be careful that your internet doesn't drop or your VPN doesn't drop when you are. I suggest using a recommended VPN, maybe like a stronger one like Nord or something like that. Mr. Ma. Just to chime in on what you're just saying, but if you do have a VPN, make sure you have a feature where you can... It's called Secure VPN if you're using Virtual Shield. Basically, it will log off every app on your computer 
basically it'll, it'll turn off your internet so that you don't have any issues with getting i'll put it this way one way it could be useful is if you have it on it will shut off your internet so nothing gets flagged in the instance of being on kucoin or whatever and then when you're ready to reconnect you just reconnect to make sure your vpn is turned on immediately um, or just exit the exchange before you try to reconnect to your vpn yeah close your apps it close out everything and thank you mr Mark. palau sharon says palau id is not sorry palau id is not citizenship just allows you to have a digital id from the country that's good that's great it's not citizenship allows you to have a digital id from the country i think it's around something like 250 dollars am i right guys something like that 250 dollars it's either 248 or 250 248 250 it takes a month and a half to do K kyc is really good yeah for the year okay which is great kyc is really good if you can because it allows you to withdraw more during the times when you need to withdraw or move your coins off and that's going to be really good pat says what app is that mr mall go residency that's virtual shield that's one of two or three that i use uh, also Virtuals. bit defender bit defender is really good okay uh, as long as they song if we do get the palau residency can we still transfer to a u.s bank or so based on my understanding palau id at this time does not have a utility address available or should i say at this time they don't have a utility paper bill statement that is attached to a physical address but rumor is they are working on that so once that's an option for those that are if you can read between the lines then some of those other exchanges that would have been restricted would be uh they'll be freed up they'll be more available good yeah i think it's important to know the difference between the law of the land and the law of the sea maritime law as well and uh, just pray about that one because there's some people that have some ideas about law and they may not be fully in alignment because there's a difference between the law that God told us to adhere to and then there's laws outside of that which are not true laws. Mm -hmm. They are laws of the sea. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I will be doing. If I wasn't able, if I'd be doing, I'd, I'd be doing. Uh, let's say I was in America, I'd be doing everything in my power to uh, gain access to buy heart. Just felt it's important to mention. Uh, so one one of the things to 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 just to speak on what Ian said about the maritime law and the law of the land. The law of the land is the true law and it's behind the scenes. And there's the law of the land will uphold in court. You will, if you ever go to court and you defend yourself using the law of the land, you're in for a battle. You will win if you eventually fight correctly. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways they try to get you to still act in accordance with the law of the sea or maritime law. Everything else is just for a show. It all has to do with corporations and it's all fake. It's really not true, but it's all a lie to get you to be a slave to the system. Even Jesus went as far as telling us, you are slaves and you don't know you are. Uh, but they didn't know that they were slaves. We were slaves in sin and of this current system. If you look at the flags of America, when we went off when we went into the United States Corporation and we went away from United States of America, when we went to these types of systems, there was a flag that was changed and certain countries changed the flag. And the flag looks like this. Fringe. And this changes the dimensions of the United States flag. And it looks something like this. But if you look on TV, any time you see a flag with yellow fringes. It's an incorrect flag. It's not the dimensions of the standard flags from all over the nations of the world. It's one of the biggest giveaways that our nation is under a corporation and that what we're seeing is based on maritime law or the law of the sea. So it's not the United States Corporation, the United States of America, it's United States Corporation of America. It's basically what it is. And there's a lot of things behind the scenes about how it's bankrupt 
And it's only a matter of time before all of that becomes public or the system changes to gold standard. And I believe that corporation has to come to an end at some time. This will be of uh, all the three letter agencies. Um, it's going to be a big deal when it comes out to light. But until then, there's a game that you're playing. And the game is that everyone else is trying to pretend like you're the one that's out of your mind. You're the one that's not in reality. It's like the whole... Uh, LGBTQ movement. They want you to acknowledge and think that there's more than one, two genders. They want you to believe all of these things and get you to accept that uh, a man really is a woman and she can compete in sports at the same level as men. Why these women are just getting killed and obliterated, such as the, the whole Leah Thomas situation, the swimming, beating all the women who trained their whole lives by more than 30 seconds. And it's just a nightmare watching these men play basketball with these women leagues and just moving and, and making them have injuries that are just terrible. It's just, and they want you to believe it's all true. They want you to accept a fake version of reality. It is consistent with what the devil wants you to do. He always wants you to look at reality in the wrong perspective. He's been doing it since Adam and Eve days. And he's been doing it now. Just look at Adam and Eve. God said, don't eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Because that belongs to God. And Satan comes and says, wait a minute, God just doesn't want you to be like him. You can be like God. They already were like God. But they make it change their perspective. Same truth. It's always truth, but twisted truth. A situation where they make reality different than what it is just by your own perception. So you believe the lie. Jesus said Satan is the father of lies. And you'll see a lot more like that if you guys want to go down those rabbit holes. It is a big rabbit hole to go down. I don't recommend everybody go down it, but if you do, pray before you go because it's a very big thing. I just want to let you guys know there is that type of reality that's shifted. So if you play those games and just know that the real truth is the law of the land, the law that God gave us, inalienable rights. And so you're seeing this battle that's taking place over, over reality of who really controls which. And I believe that God's going to absolutely come out on top. But we are going to go through a battle, not just in courts, but in real life. We'll finish up looking at Sheba. And I think we're going to end for there. And for there, we're out of time for today. So we had a lot of great conversations, great prophetic discussions. We'll include all of this in the full video. Let's look at Sheba and then we'll end for the day. And here it is. Okay. Uh, Sheba on the weekly chart took its hit just like all the other cryptos. And in this crypto, it lost one of its closer setups, which was in this zone here to here. Okay, a lot of buying and support was happening here, but the move down pushed it all the way back into these areas. Now, luckily we talked about this on Saturday. So I thought this was really interesting. And price at that time on Saturday, was back in these prices here. And we had spiked down into this 23 area with support, but then Bitcoin had its big move down and it's here. So this Bitcoin move took out a lot of cryptos. The problem is they didn't take out what was really happening in the market. And that is that buying was happening here. And the watch line is still in play and the setup is still where it should be. So price coming down to target number one, which is great because we were expecting this, price coming back down all the way to target number one exactly is a good sign. Look how exact it is. We went exactly to the top part of that target. Now luckily we've had all these targets for months, so you guys all know these prices and you all know a game plan of what to do. It's great if you can accumulate some here. The professionals have started accumulating some along this track in this section. I said, hey, get some at the closest you can to these prices. That's what I think you can do. If you're going to get more Shiba, you want to get it as close to target number two. Now, here's the thing. What did we learn today? We learned a lot from prophetic that Bitcoin should hit one more time a lower. We saw in the data, Bitcoin should hit one more time lower because the increase of supply, which means they're going to try to test it down a little bit lower to those numbers. So it would make sense that Bitcoin goes to a low number for a touch and go situation, but not lose its main setup being bullish. So we showed how Bitcoin is still bullish. It can spike down into these areas and it still did not lose its round structure, which means it's still going up. We can see heavy buying in Bitcoin, which means it's still going up. It would make sense that everything that happens now is temporary.
okay some of the cryptos we saw today like cspr they lost some of their setups but there still supports at lower numbers and we're seeing so much by far there's prophetic numbers that are on the low that may be activated so therefore i would conclude this it's very possible you're going to see even though bitcoin shiba had a big bounce we're going to see it one more time come back into these areas this is still a bullish zone anything above in this territory is very bullish here was the key angle here was the phantom it's very possible we're still bullish this was the tiger where it should have been but external factors are going to help go to the next lowest zone which is target number one which we hit down into target number one just two days ago so that's natural down here still bullish because we're on top of the phantom the watch line still active and it's very strong and we do see evidence of buying in these areas so i'm going to be bullish on Shiba, but because of the factors, I'm going to try to buy some Shiba at these prices, which is very close. So price is going to probably end up playing around in this area. Now, that's one scenario. The other scenario that can happen is that the overtaking of the Bitcoin or lack of movement on Bitcoin, because overall, we're just rounding just on top of its supports. I could see that the activation of the prophetic happening for Bitcoin and the prophecy, how we're just rounding on top of the blue area on the monthly chart, I mean, on the daily chart, just coming down into this area or even in spiking into that 55 zone, which is right about where this arrow is pointing, it's about 55. This is still going to be very bullish for Bitcoin. Okay. Here's that supply increase I was just talking about just a second ago. If you guys are just watching only this section of the video. So for us to see these things happen, I would say there's another prophecy we need to keep our eyes on. And that is the prophecy of Shiba going up during a time when Bitcoin goes down. There's only two real ways I see this happening. Either during the flash crash, when Bitcoin, after Bitcoin is hit a high number, like 120, I think that's when that would, would probably activate. That's a possibility. Bitcoin would move. But part of me doesn't expect that. And you know why I don't expect that? Because it would be too big a hit that would take over the whole market. Many cryptos are going to take a big hit when Bitcoin drops from, if it's if the top is all around 120, you will see lots of cryptos take a hit. Really big hit. And I think Shiba is not going to be an exception to it. It could be that it rises really quick and that might be a way that it's fulfilled. But more so than that, I would... I could almost see, since the bounce back was very strong from target number one, that if prices drift or come back into health in this area, we're still waiting for the real trade to take off anyway. It's going to take off when it beats the watch line. The watch line is still active, so I told you you're not expecting anything to happen until the watch line is, hap is hit. The first area was between here, and that had to take place on April 29th. But because now the new lows are down here, and even here, this watch line could take place farther in the year. So price has to make some, some decision. Here's already July of 2024. I don't think that's going to be the case. But I'm just letting you guys know that this April 29th date now gets deleted. Okay, Shenanigans, external factors. Not necessarily because of Shiba, but what Shiba's dealing with it has to deal with the whole market as a whole. So now we're going to deal, we're going to look at something else. Okay, number one, I think this watch line is still holding quite nicely, and that's very good. So if we take the watch line and make it like a key angle, and we bring it down to the lowest energy centers, which is here on the wick side, what do we see support still in? Hmm? This is the trade. The watch line is still active for when the move will happen, but now it's very natural for price to play in these areas and still not get it, get the job done. If prices go up and break into these areas and take off, this may activate some of the prophetic information we heard about Bitcoin not moving much and the major players get tired of seeing that. So they're going to start exiting Bitcoin and moving into some of these smaller projects. When they see Shiba taking off, it's only going to in further increase their incentive to just say, eh, let's just dump Bitcoin and go into Shiba. Let's dump Bitcoin and go to move to these other coins that are moving up in these seasons. So that may be the case. 
So I wouldn't count Sheba out in now, but I would be looking to see if you can scoop up any delicious Sheba prices at some of the lower target one numbers that we've had. Okay, oops, let me move that back. So these are the same target numbers we've had since almost over a year. I think it's been a year. No, not a year. We didn't do target system that long ago, but we did have our target, our tiger line up here. So if you guys think you can get some prices up here, you want to set some low orders at those prices. What we talked about last time was the 00018 and the 00014 range. So price spike to the top side of that target. Lots of, lots of very interesting, uh, a very strong, interesting bounce back into its trend but has not lost its setup. Okay, so look for this to be very much a, a very interesting scenario. In addition to all of that, if Bitcoin, since Bitcoin doesn't really have much, if Bitcoin makes a quick move down into that area and it comes back up to these round structures already in place, the move can be very quite quickly and quite unexpected. We could see a move very quickly up on Bitcoin. I'm expecting that up move on Bitcoin. I expected round action. I told you I had a vision of the Lord show me round action on top of Bitcoin on the daily chart. And I thought it was only the daily. Here's the daily, but here's the overall structure. It's very nice round, even though we're bouncing into these areas. But as we examine the evidence, we can already see there was a buying that happened all on the down moves. I showed you those high volume up bars, which we talked about uh, early. We high volume down bars followed by back-to-back -back up bars and drifting upwards on ultra high volume. Those are very key signs that buying is happening. The only problem is we didn't see oh no demand. So that's incentive for them to try to bring it down to those no demand prices. Okay, so this is what I have on Shiba. I'm still waiting for the move to happen. It needs to happen above these line. Okay, so this is just gonna shift down just a little bit. Do I have any other questions regarding Shiba and comments? I got Ian Managod, you are online um do you put a price label on the lower foundational line please the it's the light blue this is the lower foundational support man that would be scary yes it will yeah it, it well it do you would... suspect do you sense do you suspect do you feel in your spirit what do you suspect Yes, yeah, I believe that someone that I know, some, someone that I know is a friend or relative, they sold, I think, all of their sheep huh? uh, somewhere around for. They're expecting to be able to get it back for 1 1 1 1. At 1 1? Yeah, 1 1. Yeah, this is 1 1 area in April 24th. Here's yeah. one. I go to 9. Nine? Yeah, I, was it Nine is somewhere. Nine is somewhere still here at those original breakouts of the Tiger area, which is going to be that is a type of sort. That is a sort cut there. That's interesting. Then can't you say you saw those numbers? Did you see those numbers? Here's sort of cut. I think it was bankrupt. I'm not sure. Bankrupt, you hear? He's not here. Okay. Just say as well that there is a chance of 49 and also 45. I don't really know how it's all going to play out. But just if you see Bitcoin lose 55, then... Uh, if you see it lose 55. Yeah, if you see it lose 55, like if it goes below 55, then yeah, I'm expecting to see either 49 or 40. So just be aware of that. And I guess that's what probably could take probably take Shiba down that low. Yeah. Uh, he's also saying to for me to some new money, make sure I have enough liquidity for any scenarios that play out of like amazing prices, basically. Stretch this watch line out. Okay. All right. Watch this watch line. That's when your move is gonna take out some people who wanna be really safe. Well, just wait for your watch line to be broken. You can do that. Anyone who wants to just wait for your watch line to be broken, that's when the move's gonna start anyway. Otherwise, it can waste our time. Anytime you're be still below a watch line, the move hasn't really started. That's almost consistent across the board. But price playing in here, if you guys think you can get some better Shiba prices, this is gonna be the next lowest low. If you are able to you'll bring to front, if you're able to see Bitcoin get to 55, it's very possible we may see some low prices down into these areas. Into 
to say, Jason. Yeah. Yesterday on Telegram, there was a mm -hmm. uh, certain prophetic information mm -hmm. um, to pray about something, but um, that person's leading was that when BTC hits 60K, that there will be a rise in alts. Um, and so that may fit, you know, um, how Reina saw SHIB going to four, mm -hmm. BTC going down. Should go into four. Four is up here, past the watch line. That would be good. And she mm -hmm. saw this happening when BTC was going down. Mm -hmm. So if BTC goes to sixty, and then there's a rise in ULP, and then it goes further down to fifty-five, that would fit. But it's I think it's something to pray over. <laughs> I like to. I would like to add to that. I hear there will be a separation. So I'm Ooh. understanding that be a separation from. BTC and the alt. Would that be what we say? It will be a separate. That will be very good. Well, my understanding is that understanding, um, and it's not confirmed on my end in prayer, honestly, but I just feel like the BTC dominance might kick in and come to the right levels, and the alts might come hmm. rise. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see a switch from that? Invest box, you're on. Oh, he just unmuted his microphone. Did you have a comment in best box? I don't want to miss you. Okay. Just to say as well, the ETF of Ethereum's just been approved, and it could mean that Ethereum has a huge pump soonish, and that would be potentially bullish for alt, and it would mean that yeah, money would flow into ETH, and then money would flow into alt. Just something to be aware of. Yep. When I look at the volume down here at target number two, it's still very low compared comparatively to when we were first above this area here. And I didn't really see a heavy sell off. The candles don't look like it's a sell off. They're all closing near the highs, especially on the down bars, which is usually synonymous with accumulation. And then when we finally do come down, we're also still coming up near the highs. So there's a lot of buying pressure here. I wouldn't be surprised. Bitcoin, Shiba is very ready to pop, but it does have to battle with what's going on with Bitcoin. If prophetically there is a separation, man, that'd be great because that means there's a deviation between what Shiba does and what Bitcoin does. And that being, that's a very positive thing because Shiba will move up in power and take other dogs with it. Volt, Luna Classic, Doge, um, a few other uh, dogs that are, you know, those, ba you know, baby dogs, any coin. And that could have a, a good positive effect on all coins. People are, because we heard prophetically, there's going to come a time when that happens anyway. Because, again, they're going to move out of Bitcoin and into these other projects. And that's only going to lessen Bitcoin's power over the markets. And we already saw the power being drawn away from Bitcoin uh, from prior years. We saw that when Bitcoin had a bad day, these cryptos had a little bad day. When Bitcoin uh, had a good day, these cryptos had a great day. And that's what I believe you're starting to see and you're going to continue to see. So um, yeah, look for that. That's very interesting. For me, I'm not out of Shiba just yet, but I'm, I am going to be looking to accumulate more if I get the chance to some of these areas. If you if you pray about it and the Lord gives you a low, uh, these low prices, hey, that'd be great because if those things are, are down here, don't be surprised if you get a very quick move up. So if you do have low buy orders, have them great, but look for these moves to be very short lived because the structure is already bullish. Okay, but these things will be temporary if you do see them. Yeah, you're confirming what I heard. It's just going to be a quick move. It's not going to stay there because as the Lord has spoken before and he's reminding me, this lower numbers, they're not going to exist anymore for Shiva. Mm -hmm. So get it while you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And don't be caught with your pants down. Yeah. Exactly. If not you... Holding in, not with the, not with you, not with reserves ready. Yeah. If you guys are trading crypto, if you guys are trading a crypto and you have orders, just make sure your orders are ready. Don't just be like, I'm just selling ship and Shiba. I'm going to be out of this. And then you go to sleep and the moves happen very rapidly. If they do, you can be caught without a position.
But if you believe there's a low order, at least put your low order in, even if you have to later adjust it, at least you have some kind of low order in. But there's a point where I, this is what I'm thinking. Okay. This is how I would rather do it. The big boys do a similar thing. The big players who buy in millions and billions, they buy at different chunks and places along the route. Um, if they're able to get better prices, usually it's new money. It's not, oh, they sold their positions again to buy again. They do that sometimes with certain chunks to drive a sell, a sell down, but usually they buy back and they're already ready to go with their buy order. By and far, their plan is to accumulate over time. Okay. And if you're going to be buying and selling, it may be better to sell some of your position and have new money coming in with your position, your other orders. So if you believe that a certain crypto you can get for a lot cheaper, instead of just dumping everything, which you could, you may want to consider just new money at some of those prices, which means some of your crypto you bought at very low and some you bought at higher prices. Superfood coined the term dollar cost mapping which means look at a map, pick the lows on the map and put orders at those lows rather than just dollar cost averaging, which is just buying over time, hoping you get lucky, some high, some low. This is just buying at the low places on the map. And this has helped Superfood position himself for lots of different map points. He, he talks about it all the time. He just looks at one of our maps and picks some of the low numbers and just sets buy orders at the lows. And when they get filled, usually there's a quick recovery at some of those supports. And if he doesn't get them, then he picks the next lows and he just keeps buying at the lows. If that's the only thing you did with our maps, praise God. If that's the only thing you do with prophetic numbers, praise God. Have them ready to go. And you may get filled. Put some of your liquidity in those. But you may want to just use it with new money rather than just risk getting out of position. All things can be done with prayer, but according to your skill uh, and how quick you're able to respond, how some of you guys don't know how to navigate all the buttons. So just use new money in those senses. If you have some extra cash at those low prices, that might be uh, better. The dominance chart is nearly at the top of the trend line. Let's take a look at dominance real quick. This is where uh, we last looked at dominance and seeing prices breaking below these areas, I was expecting dominance to come down. Here is one of the trend lines and we broke above, got a close last week and then came up above here. When this chart goes up, that is the one that, is this the one that's good for, let me make sure, I have it in the notes here. In summary, this chart is the indicator of when altcoins should be strong or weak in alignment with BTC. Currently there's weakness that has appeared. This is good for altcoins. So when this chart goes up, it means Bitcoin has more of a hold on the market. Okay, so let's try to find where the next weakness would be. I'm going to connect these bottoms here, borrow this one. And let's see if we can draw some of the weaknesses that may next appear. This would be borrowed and we can use this here. Okay. This is starting to mushroom over. That's nice. Ah, I, I can see this happening. This will be a good sign. Here's a parabolic. Let's see if we can catch it on Wix side. Price mushrooming over is a good sign for parabolics. Here's something like this. Once we have this parabolic, Let's duplicate this. Who's drawing on my chart? And we'll bring it down to our lowest energy centers in this area. And that should give us support about right here and support back here. If we, oops. And if we stretch this out, um, it would continue approximately here. I wonder if we can bring it here. This is very interesting because this is still within its range. Okay, which means the next weakness should happen under here that'll be good okay so this will be a good sign when we get over here that this is slowing down we almost got it last time with just already showing signs of weaknesses based on the straights entering in and that's a good sign there's usually when it comes to straights there's usually one and then there's another one and it's these two energies here this is where the support was this one came up one more time but look at the parabolic this is going to be the final nail in the coffin Short-term weaknesses entering into the market, which means we're going down. But if you want to put the final nail in the common, it's going to be here. So we cover some of this type of parabolic dissection in, in, in our tutorials. If you are new to this content, go to our website, type in parabolic, the word parabolic, and lesson. And I show you how we relate straights to parabolics. Because when you see multiple straights over and over again, 
look to see the the hidden parabolic with, with within those the other lesson that's linked to this is called accelerated adjustment zones or accelerated adjustment lines aal is the tutorial i teach one of these aal's in our sword method lessons one through ten classes just type in lessons if you're a dive tier member you're going to see all of this lessons pop up look at aal you'll see multiple straights we teach how to do these accelerations in this case it's decelerations and then when we prices break over that, usually they form a parabolic. It's an easy way to see that. So in this case, we can see the first weakness is appearing below these straights. We did in dotted blue. See this one. And then another one could be drawn if you wanted to from here to here, which I didn't draw yet, but we could. And that's just taking these energy centers this would be the next weakness, but overall the parabolic and its phantom underneath is going to be a big clue about when alts are going to be moving really strong. Okay, so look for that to be the case. So hmm? if this goes up, Bitcoin and alts go up. Uh, bit, no, when this goes up, Bitcoin no. has a stronger hold on the market. Okay. So the alts are going to be here soon. Now this is on a weekly chart. So this may be uh, this time season below July of 2024. And if prices come down again on this Bitcoin dominance and then we drift, that's going to be one of the final nails because that's all that's going to be the next real big one. OK. What, what she's asking is that if it goes up, basically, that's really bad for alts. If it goes up, if it goes down, it's good for alt. And at this point, okay. did you, was that you that drew the yellow line on the on the on top the chart? Yeah, it was me, yeah. Okay, so oh, you okay. think it's going to go up a little bit more to that 58? Or a little, just up a bit first? I don't know. I would have to correct. You just drew, you just drew it there, right? So By mistake. By mistake? Oh. Yeah, I was trying to get out, and I was trying to get out, and I keep drawing stuff getting out. Oh, okay. Maybe that was it. A... <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to get out and I kept drawing. <laughs> yeah. There are no mistakes. No. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I can't get out. <laughs> no mistakes. There's no sin either. There's no sin either too, Christian. Is that Christian? I believe we're going to hit 55. <laughs> And not go further down than that. We only seen. Here, here's the 55 number. It's up today. Is that 55 right here on this? <laughs> Although that's not the. This is the dominance. It's 55 percent. <laughs> so maybe a little bit different. Okay. And remember, this is a this is a phantom parabolic where it's leveled off approximately here. I think it's on the monthly charts where I showed it. Okay, something like this. It's very possible there's resistance in these areas. We'll, we'll need to re-examine these a little more in depth in the future, but this is still natural within its trend. Okay, although it's a good sign that it's slowing down, a very good sign. It could be that it's gonna push up because at the same time, people are pushing up there because they want it to mm -hmm. go to the 100. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that it's gonna be, 55 is gonna be something quick, it's not gonna sit there or anything. It's going to be it's just to buy back in if it happens. It could be 55 touch and go, like its other numbers have happened before. It'll be a touch and go. Good. And then bump it back to, you know, 65. Because I did hear last 45 regardless. That's what the Lord said. 75 regardless. But I already had heard from the Lord that it prior that it was going to go to 55 but I see that 55 as a drop and getting and just getting even stronger that's the way I see it that's the way I feel it to the core of my bone and I that, that much I'm extremely certain it's just to be stronger it's like a storm it starts at a storming goes all the way up to category five takes everything down that's the way i see bitcoin okay 
All right. Thank you so much for everybody. Today, we're not going to cl- conclude reading the Word of God. We did have a, a few important discussions today. If you didn't catch Word Room, uh, it's been uploaded just yesterday. And it's a very important, very strong message regarding observation. It's an in-depth study of the book of Daniel looking at the kings. And we did also look at King Solomon and King Belshazzar Belshazzar yesterday and Daniel chapter 5. So if you guys want to put that on, just let it play in the background as you're through your day. A very strong message. I hope you guys enjoy that message that we preached just yesterday. It's public. You guys can join us. We'll be back on Wednesday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's early for more of the people on the opposite side of the world, but you're welcome to join with us. Usually on Wednesdays, we do tutorials. We'll pick some good tutorial lessons and go slowly together on the Wednesday. See you guys then.